Weeks later, that's still all that is known, with Syrians unclear if they'll be part of the safe zone, who will be in charge of the region, how it will be safe, or indeed how the US and Turkey even intend to make such a safe zone happen since both are ruling out any use of ground troops. While the timing initially fueled assumptions that the zone would include a lot of the Islamic State territory, more recent suggestions are that this is not actually what will happen and that the territory will be further west, carved more out of Kurdish territory than the Islamic State territory as Turkey shifts its war focus against the Kurds. Locals have heard all these plans to end the war before and the talk of an imminent safe zone is just the latest empty promise and the US and Turkey comments are just another PR front for an unworkable scheme that will eventually fall by the wayside in favor of more bombings. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy, and for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports three years after lawmakers abolished the death penalty in Connecticut, the state Supreme Court ruled Thursday the execution of any inmate still on death row is unconstitutional. In April 2012, Connecticut Governor Daniel Malloy signed a bill making the death penalty illegal in the state for any crime committed after April 25, 2012. That left 11 convicts on death row still eligible for execution, though. The state Supreme Court said Thursday it would be cruel and unusual punishment to now execute those inmates including Eduardo Santiago, who requested the court review the issue. Judge Richard Palmer in the majority decision wrote, Upon careful consideration of the defendant's claims in light of the governing constitutional principles and Connecticut's unique historical and legal landscape, we are persuaded that, following its prospective abolition, the state's death penalty no longer comports with contemporary standards of decency and no longer serves any legitimate penological purpose. Justice Chase Rogers dissented, writing the majority of opinion was fundamentally flawed and based on a house of cards. 19 states and the District of Columbia have abolished the death penalty, and Connecticut was the 16th state to do so in 2012. The 11 inmates spared the death penalty will instead receive life in prison without the possibility of parole. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a Kentucky County Clerk's Office on Thursday defied a federal judge's order by continuing to block marriage licenses for same-sex couples, saying the legal case was still pending. The Rowan County Clerk's Office turned away at least three same-sex couples who tried to get marriage licenses, according to local media and court documents. Kim Davis, the Rowan County Clerk who stopped issuing all marriage licenses following the U.S. Supreme Court's June ruling that legalized same-sex marriage, is on vacation. Nathan Davis, a relative who also worked at the clerk's office told Reuters the office was not currently taking licenses because of active litigation. He declined further comment. In a court filing, plaintiff April Miller said she and Karen Roberts tried on Thursday to obtain a marriage license shortly before noon and were rebuffed. On Wednesday, U.S. District Court Judge David Bunning issued a preliminary injunction ordering Davis's office to process license applications for all couples, saying she had to live up to her responsibility as a county clerk. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Retail giant CVS is gearing up for floods of customers seeking the perfect meaningless piece of crap for their office gift swap. The company is making no secret that when it comes to wasting the obligatory $20 on a useless electronic dartboard or pretzel maker for someone you couldn't care less about, CVS is your best option. Our incredible selection of worthless shit is just the thing that nobody wants. We guarantee you'll find nothing personal or unique in our store.
The company is offering massive discounts on otherwise unsellable items for holiday parties you don't even want to go to, like the $12 decorative lantern, which is expected to be a big hit with customers who grab the first thing they see when they walk in the store. I really wanted to get something that said, I don't care about any of you people and I didn't put any effort into this. CBS also has Hanukkah gifts for co-workers who you think might be Jewish, like candles and those little plastic net bags full of chocolate money. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to join us here on the radio waves. You can join us via the phone. Uh, we'll give you the Skype address here in a little bit as well. Uh, with you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And, of course, you can bring up anything that you want to discuss. Danica and Daryl, you guys both actually had the same story just by chance uh, yes. tonight, which is about Airbnb. Now, I've never stayed at an Airbnb, but... I, I have. How did it go? Where were, Where was it also? Uh, New York City. And what is Airbnb for those who uh, have never heard of this before? Airbnb, to to be sure, is home sharing, so to speak. And the home sharing can be anywhere from a couch to the entire apartment or the entire house. And some places have even gotten created as to having a tree house or even a yurt outside. It just depends on, where, huh. on what you're looking for. So you can get some really unique places that you can stay you could live like a local essentially and that's what appeals to a lot of people many times it is much cheaper than the hotel Mm -hmm. that's staying at because the the airbnb uh charge that you pay which would you sometimes may come off as like a tax goes to the actual airbnb and it goes to the person who's renting the room out so is there tax on airbnb no 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 there's not i'm just saying airbnb charge it like okay so you so there's a fee let's say fifty dollars that goes to the tenant then say maybe nine dollars so you're told be fifty nine nine dollars of that goes to air goes to airbnb fifty dollars goes to the person so there's a surcharge right yeah okay use the word tax i I said i I said some people can look at it like a tax and the way that i say it is that if you're paying a surcharge better to pay it to a company than to you know a tax i wouldn't say that the Using a, the term tax is uh, is accurate there, right? Because the tax is something that is forced upon people, right. whereas you know you're not obligated. Well, that's to, what I'm saying. I yeah. think it's better to, if you can, if you know, some people don't like the idea of staying in someone else's house. Some people like the pampering of a hotel. Sure. But if you stay at a hotel, you're likely going to have to pay some sort of hotel tax. Whereas a Airbnb, oh, yeah. you pay a surcharge to Airbnb and you help out someone that's renting out their room. Sure. And I'm sure the government's not so happy with the fact that they're not getting Absolutely. taxes out of the Airbnb. Uh, just in the same way that the governments are mad. Lots of governments are mad at Uber. I've got some news about Uber. Uber and Lyft, these ride-sharing services. This is sort of like ride-sharing but for homes, essentially, yes. right? Essentially. Yeah, and then another... Uh, I, I guess not really competitor, but there's couchsurfing.org as a website. Okay. I think that one's older than Airbnb. Uh, the difference is with the couchsurfing website, you are not allowed to charge. And oh, really? you're supposed to refuse a tip. So if somebody stays at your house wow. and they're like, hey, like, you know, I, I want to give you some money, you're supposed to refuse that. Now, okay. So I've never been on the couchsurfing site. I'm not familiar. I've never used it, but I've. Talk to they, people that have. So do they rate the surfers? Because I imagine you would yes. get a lower quality of right. person so, if right. they're not paying. So it's uh, very similar to Uber and Lyft to where the person that stays gets to rent or rate the person they stayed with. And the person that you know hosted the couch surfer gets to rate the person that stayed on their couch. Now with Airbnb, uh, and since you've actually done this, Danica... Mm-hmm. When uh, you know, you mentioned that there's these different levels of right. uh, types of rooms that you can get. You could get a couch. You could get a, a yurt. You could get a, a tree house or whatever. You know different. beforehand. Yeah, you know, right. you know beforehand. No, yeah. I understand that. Uh, I guess you know they call it Airbnb. Does that mean that there's always like a breakfast service available at not, these places? Or not always. No. Sometimes Some, there is. Sometimes the person that's renting out the room will allow you use of the kitchen, so you can make it. 
sometimes the host will actually make breakfast for you. Not all the time. It depends on what you're looking for, and you can select it in what you're looking for in your amenities if you mm. care about breakfast, if you care about Wi-Fi, or anything like that. So where did you end up, and where in New York? Was it Manhattan? Yeah, it was Lower Manhattan. It was about, I want to say, about $100 a night. I That's got, not bad. It's not bad at all for Manhattan, You can't for sure. find, I mean, in, in Manhattan, you can't get a room for less than $200 a night. I totally that's agree. that's a cheap hotel. And what was nice about this is that most hotels require you to check in at, say, what, 3, 4 o'clock? Yep. Um, the person that was renting the room to me allowed me to check in really early because I had a conference to go to. So he let me check in at 8 a.m. so that I could get mm. my things ready and I could go to my conference at uh, 9, which was just like two blocks away. Wow. So it's super flexible. And he, they're also very, it, and it depends on the person too. They can make it be very strict on what time you check in or they can make it flexible. So was that it, your first time doing yes. Airbnb? Would you do it again? Absolutely. And so I wonder what level of fear these Airbnb operators have of the local governments because this is a major way to pass savings on to customers. And, you know, if you're not paying the rooms and meals tax or whatever it is mm-hmm. it's called, because in, in New York City especially, the tax is like I've ridiculous. I've heard it's like 30%. There's well, more than like one. Ten, it's like 10% state and then 8% city. So it's like a total of 18%. That actually may be on the low side. But, yeah, yeah I feel like it may, might be even more than that. I mean, I'm always sticker shocked whenever I see that the, just the – I mean, the room price alone is expensive. Right. Uh, but the taxes are, are even worse. And so when the city is missing out on money that's being transacted, because this is what governments love to do. I mean, if, if they know that business is being done – the government loves to come in there and demand We're, a We cut. need a piece of this action. Right. They've well, done we nothing. had nothing to do with the right. transaction, but uh, you have to pay us because... They, yeah, they have not done anything at all to benefit either side we of the transaction. We don't like entrepreneurs. Bad. But, no, they really don't. And so that's why they've been picking on Uber and, to a lesser extent, been picking on Airbnb. But uh, apparently now, Daryl's got a story about a lady who is in serious hot water because she's operated an Airbnb like place to stay. Yes. So the story here comes from Vice, and they say in the latest legal hurdle confronting modern age home rentals, a woman in San Diego has been hit with a hefty $25,000 fine for failing to obtain the required permit to operate a bed and breakfast Whoa. out of her home. Okay. 25000 Rachel Smith is 70 years old. She's a retired Jeez. school teacher. She contends that she never served breakfast to travelers who rented her guest bedroom through Airbnb. Hmm. She claims that would technically exempt her from the city's legal definition of bed and breakfast, which would make a permit necessary. Smith bought her five-bedroom home in the historic Burlingame neighborhood of San Diego in 2007 after receiving a large inheritance. In May 2012, she decided she had more space than she, her daughter, and her granddaughter needed. With her granddaughter's help, she set up an Airbnb account, advertised her guest room for $80 a night with access to the kitchen, laundry room, and the backyard. That's a great deal for $80 a night in That's, San Diego. And I, I've been to San Diego dozens of times, okay. and yet yeah, you're not going to find any place to sleep. Other than maybe a Roach Motel or a hostel for $80, for $80 a night. A night. Mm-hmm. She told the San Diego Reader, I bought this house for my family to enjoy, but I still had these extra rooms. I thought how fun this house, the community would be for other families to come and enjoy. Yeah, I guess absolutely. I'm a dying breed, but I wanted to share this beautiful home with other people. Right. What's the point in leaving a house sitting empty or partially empty? You could use that space for whatever purpose, in this case, to rent out to folks. And nobody bats an eye. I mean, even within the government, uh, I guess there probably are some areas where there's ridiculous rental restrictions. But generally, it's not bat. You know, nobody bats an eye if you put up a room for rent for a month. Like if you put a sign up out in front of your yard, room for rent. 600 bucks a month or whatever the the amount you're charging. Right. Who's going to come by and you know meddle in that? That's such an, an an old long-standing tradition that nobody really thinks about that as a problem, but renting it out for a night, well, all of a sudden or a weekend, now the government's angry. Right. And also if you just have a guest come over to your house for a night or a weekend, mm-hmm. 
then well that's okay because they were a guest and like they they were your cousin or you know like your roommate from high school or college or whatever so that's okay but oh the money was transacted um nope we can't have that so cuz you know it might lead to other illicit activities that might be happening so now $25,000 is what the city of San Diego is yes. uh, demanding from her and it sounds like she is not going to roll over and pay up so the story here continues her neighbors did not feel the same way that being you know just let me share my home with other people meaning her neighbors are on the side on her side no, no, no. No. Uh, Her neighbors did not feel the same way. I thought you way. meant feel the same way as the government. Stand by. We'll uh, we'll come back and see what they have to say. The busy bodies, I guess, that likely snitched this lady out. Our number, 855-450-FREE. Do you disagree with uh, the freedom to rent your place on, short, on a short-term basis? This is Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Due to an upturn in the economy, Main Street Business Loans has pre-approved the release of millions of dollars in small business funding. Your business may already be pre-approved to receive up to $250,000. We've sent out millions of pre-approval letters. We see the economy growing, and our underwriters believe now is the time to invest in your business so you can grow faster and make more money. And we're prepared to give you up to $250,000 to do it. Your funds can be available in five days. There are no application fees, no annual fees, just quick access to up to $250,000. If your business did not receive your approval letter to get up to $250,000, call Main Street Business Loans Approval Desk now. 800-430-4505. 800-430-4505. That's 800-430-4505. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to join us here if you've got experience with Airbnb and maybe you think Airbnb is a bad thing. How dare those people rent their rooms out to total strangers? How dare they collect money for empty rooms that are otherwise just sitting in their house costing them money? Because if you've got room in your house, rooms in your house, unless you've, you know, sealed them off or whatever, they're probably getting some level of heat. They're probably getting some level of air conditioning. And uh, that's costing you money right there, not to mention the property taxes. You're paying property tax, likely, on every square foot of that house, sure. whether there's someone living in it or not. And so why shouldn't people be able to put that stuff up for rent, even on a short-term basis, whether or not they're performing breakfasty style services and whether or not they're collecting the money in Bitcoin or in cash? Bitcoinist.net is the ultimate resource for Bitcoin industry news, reviews, education, and the latest in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Their website at Bitcoinist.net integrates a community forum, breaking Bitcoin and digital currency news, as well as fintech and blockchain tech news. Bitcoinist has sophisticated Bitcoin network statistics, a solid beginner's guide to Bitcoin, and more. The Bitcoinist platform serves the needs of everyone who are looking to keep up with Bitcoin and digital currencies. From beginners... To experts, go to Bitcoinist.net to get started there. That's Bitcoinist.net. Uh, Daryl, you're sharing a story about a San Diego woman who is in some pretty serious hot water with the state there, or the city government, who's now come after her with a $25,000 fine for daring to operate an Airbnb. Now, as she points out, she's not offering the B part of the B&B, the second B, right. uh, the breakfast portion, which and is not required to do Airbnb. Right, and right. in San Diego, the uh, the ordinance specifies that a bed and breakfast must provide breakfast. And she's saying, from a legal standpoint, I am not a bed and breakfast right. because I do not serve breakfast. The one thing that she's doing is that she's offering them access to the kitchen so they can make it themselves. She is not preparing yep. it. right. Uh, Smith's neighbors, uh, Smith being the last name of Rachel Smith, 70-year-old retired school teacher who is renting out a room in her house. Uh, her neighbors apparently do not share her passion for entertaining friends and travelers. Huh. And the trouble began in September of 2013, a full year after she began renting out a room. When one neighbor contacted a city councilor to express concern that she was operating a bed and breakfast out of her home. The councilor then contacted the deputy director of code enforcement. An investigation was launched into the legal parameters of Smith's Airbnb activities. In the official complaint that Smith's attorney, Omar Passens, shared with Vice News, the primary concerns, security, overcrowding in a residential neighborhood, Impact on our privacy and impact on our home values. That's ridiculous because she can absolutely like refuse to rent a room. Like if someone requests to rent a room, you have the ability through Airbnb to refuse a room. Right, if they don't look like they're a legit client. They or don't they have don't have rating. a good rating, yeah. Uh, the complaint... but the tra- hold on before you go on the traffic was the issue, right? Like ah, there's all these cars coming from other states and security. And, and, and. Right. Overcrowding in the residential That's neighborhood. What they mean, overcrowding is because you impact to the privacy and impact to home values. Ridiculous. So ridiculous. The complaint also states, quote, we first realized that she was using her home as a business during a Memorial Day holiday when we saw four men leaving the property with roller luggage, followed by a new shipment of guests about an hour later. <gasps> I asked my husband if it was possible she was running a hotel. 
And now, before I continue, I, I I love the way people use like word art. Shipment of guests, <laughs> not just you know, somebody drove up. It was a new shipment, like you know, yeah. D H L or FedEx or UPS rolled up with. Here, just... Here's your new shipment of guests. Where would you like me to leave them? Here, these guests are from Montana, and an hour later, you're going to get more guests from Texas. <laughs> The complainant also expresses concern that cigarette smoke was drifting over from Smith's patio into their child's bedroom. Oh, this woman is the worst, whoever this complaining party is. Noise pollution is not mentioned in the complaint. So they were quiet. Uh, The complaint concludes, We are waiting for something very bad to happen. We had a wonderful few years in our home before this owner purchased the property and decided that her right to ignore common courtesy <laughs> is more important than the welfare of wow. the Burlingame community. Oh what about the common courtesy of leaving your neighbors alone? I mean, look, if there was a party that was going on over there every single night and they were making a bunch of noise, I could understand an objection to right, that. Th- there's no mention of a right. noise complaint. These are people who are coming there to sleep so they can go to, the, like you said, a conference or whatever their reason is for being in town. They're sure, yeah. Not- and I know San Diego has some, you know, has a bunch of different cultural things and some military bases. It's probably a military family stays there, goes to the ceremony, and then goes on with their business. Right. In July of 2014, Smith was informed that she had violated the municipal code by running a bed and breakfast without the appropriate permits. The requirement for a conditional use permit, or neighborhood use permit, as it is known in San Diego, allows someone to use their home in a new way, like run a bed and breakfast. The review of an application for a neighborhood use permit can take up to a year. All right, stand by on that. Let's bring Wayne on board here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We got Wayne listening in Raleigh, North Carolina, to Talk Radio 850. Go ahead, Wayne. Okay, you're on the air. Here you go. All right. Here you go, guys. I can see where neighbors could be objections. Okay. Depending on on the layout of your neighborhood, if you're in a, uh, in a lot of these new subdivisions, houses, houses are stacked right on top of each other. Okay. First off, the driveways maybe have room for one or two cars. That's it. All right. So, so all of a sudden, if everybody in the neighborhood decides they're going to open up an Airbnb, now you got Everyone in the neighborhood isn't going to open up an Airbnb, first of all. But second of all, you're jumping to a conclusion about how much room this woman has in her driveway. There wasn't a complaint about people parking on their uh, their lawn. There wasn't a complaint, and by the way, I wouldn't care if they were parking on their lawn anyway, but there wasn't a complaint about the busybodies being upset because someone was parking, uh, one of their guests was parking their car in front of the busybody's house. That wasn't the complaint. So it's not fair to jump well, to a conclusion. And first of all, no one is – you're never going to have a situation where every home starts to become an Airbnb because the prices will go down too far and it won't be worth doing. Well, I can I can tell you there's some neighborhoods in Raleigh where at most you can put one car in a driveway. Okay. Okay. It's also – it is a violation of the code. Whether Who cares you about your you code? Don't agree with the code. Well – if you don't agree with the code, you'd go to the the city council. Oh, yeah. Have, have you ever submit. tried to do that before? I love people who make this suggestion. If you don't like it, you should go and change it within the system. Have you and, ever tried to do that? Uh, yes, and sometimes it works. And sometimes really? It's actually it worked for you? That's and amazing. And technically, because she is not serving breakfast, she does not fall into the right, municipal exactly. definition of bed and she, breakfast in San Diego. She's still providing lodging, and they probably also have a room tax in San Diego. That oh, she probably my. How dare either. she? How dare she avoid that room tax? She what is not criminal. avoiding the well, room tax. I've just not gotten to that part right, of the we'll, story. We'll get to that here. Hey, Wayne, if you want to stand by, you sound like you're the kind of guy who snitches on his neighbors. Hang on. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. 
So I say to Mark at lunch, look, you know, I keep hearing from the government that, you know, they're worried someday ISIS may get here. And I go, duh, uh, Garland, Texas, Muhammad cartoon shooting. ISIS is already here. I'm not waiting for these people to defend me. I, if they don't know ISIS is here already, they got no clue. I'm taking care of myself. Guns80.com, AR-15 kits, 30-shot magazines, great prices. They've even got the Hillary special. Guns80.com, that's 844-2-GUNS-80, guns80.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated. So send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. The toll-free number for Free Talk Live, if you want to join us here and talk about how you just hate people who are daring to rent their house out, their rooms or their couch or their tree house or various other things that people can stay in and sleep in, lay their head down for the night or a few nights uh, via this Airbnb service. And I think there's probably some competitor, but I've never heard of uh, whoever the competitor is. Daryl, you said there's a couch surfing, but you can't charge right. for the couch surfing. Um, so I imagine it's the government guys who are really going after the Airbnb, and that's what's happening in San Diego with a woman who is facing a $25,000 fine now. We're going to talk more about her story because there is more detail that's uh, important to get out about that. Plus, we'll take your calls at 855-450-FREE. We've also got Skype, by the way, for those of you who could use that. Uh, Skype username is lrn.fm. And with you in the studio tonight, by the way, it's Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And over at freedomsphoenix.com every day, they're uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. 
Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are provided detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedoms Phoenix offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com, get signed up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. We go back to Wayne. He's listening in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I got to say, I'm surprised anybody really called in when I asked the question of who could possibly support a crackdown on Airbnb. And here you are, Wayne. You actually, you know, are making excuses for what the San Diego government is doing to this woman. What do you think the appropriate uh, punishment should be for somebody who rents out a room to somebody else without government permission? I think it's no more than a cease and desist order. I think $25,000 is obsessive. Okay, well, that's good. But if she doesn't cease and desist, then what? Hello? I guess at that point, you you maybe have to start, you know, charging her, you know, or put liens on her property. So that would lead to uh, stealing her home, right? Unless she uh, pays off those liens? That's right. Yeah. So you believe that the men and women calling themselves the government should be able to steal someone's home from them because they rented out a room without they giving do. them money first? If you don't pay it. If you don't pay your property taxes, they, they put a lien on your house. I know what and, they and, do. And I'm asking you if you agree with it. You know, if people aren't, I mean, I hate to agree with the government, but they're providing, you know, services. No, they're not. Hold on. Let, let, let me ask the question another way. Wayne, would you personally be willing to remove this 70-year-old woman from her home because she is doing something that you don't like? It's not a case of me not liking it. No, you said the code says, so that basically says that you think that whatever's written down on paper should be enforced. I'm asking, are you personally willing to go enforce this, or do you only want people that have been given a shiny badge to go enforce this on your behalf? I guess have the ones that are that wear shiny badge on my behalf. Again, so you're a coward. coward. Yeah, they nobody wants to arrest a 70-year-old woman. I mean, you certainly don't want to kidnap her, right, She's Wayne? not hurting I anyone. I arrest her. I was just saying put a lien on her for What do you think's going to happen? Okay, so so then. basically wait till she dies. You, you don't want to actually go in and no. take men with guns and throw her out from her own house. You just want to steal the house from of her family afterwards. Not. Is that right? Of course not. I mean, the thing is, all she has to do is just not rent the room and, and obey. That's right. Just obey. Just bow down and kiss the ring, kiss the boot, and you'll, you know, you can die without doing everything you've really ever wanted to do in your whole life. So what's the difference? Rent a room. What's the difference if she's renting a room to a steady monthly renter or renting it out per vacation for different people? What is the difference? No one is going to complain about a renter, but people are going to be complaining about guests. Seriously? Well, if if she if if the city has an ordinance against a rooming house in that zoning district, you didn't answer the question. Different. What's the that what's they the have a ordinance against bed and breakfast? She is not violating the ordinance against bed She's and breakfast because breakfast. she is not giving anyone breakfast. But they may have or other via you know uh, other. That's ordinances the one like, they're saying she violated. I know is they, the bed and breakfast. If they fail ordinance. at this, though, Daryl, they'll just come back at her with a lodging house violation or some sort of uh, temporary room. Oh, house. just wait until yeah. I finish the article, and you'll no. find out the. They're going after her with this bed and breakfast charge. No, I know they're going after her with a bed and breakfast. And what I'm saying it is, went through the court. It's already gone through the courts. Oh, really? Oh, I, yes. I missed that detail. I've not gotten to oh. that detail. All right, all right. Well, we'll get in. We'll get into that uh, detail here in a moment. But Wayne, you didn't answer Danica's question about what is the difference. You answered her question by saying, "Well, there's code, there's ordinances." But what the, what is the difference between someone who's renting monthly, someone who's renting a uh, week, a place weekly? And somebody who goes in and rents for a weekend. What's the difference there? There isn't any. But if it's if, as long as it's within the codes and ordinances that are in place, that's the that's the kicker here. Wow, I, I just uh, I just can't even imagine what life is like as you, Wayne. Thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Just to just to be so obedient, to be so deferent toward uh, these ordinances, and just. Just to, to believe that something is so special about the words that these people have written down on paper. You know, a lot of places I've noticed here, especially in the New England area, run rent by week. 
Like there's a lot of places yeah. that are that run weekly instead yeah. of monthly. What's wrong with that? And what's wrong? With, yeah, there is no difference. So I don't it, know it's why people easier are for some people, especially people to get paid weekly. Sure, I get paid weekly. That'd be nice if I if I did it that way. Let's go to Straight Razor. He's in Texas, listening on LRN.FM. Hello, Straight Razor. Good evening. So I have a feeling that this lady would have a problem getting pulled over every day because I feel that her car may crash into somebody and be a danger, because that's what she's saying. I'm going to presume that there's danger because there are different people coming to this house. You t- you're talking about so the lady, you mean the busybody, the snitch lady yeah, the, the across neighbor. the street. Yeah. Yeah. So then if, if you're going to take that, that line of thinking, then I should be out pulling over every single car under the presumption that they are dangerous just because they've entered an area different than they live in. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's that's absolutely ridiculous. So should someone put a lien on my car if I start giving people rides for money? Uh, Well, that's what they're trying to do in some places. I know, because many friends offer to pay to help with gas. So what difference is that as opposed to like donating and to actually paying someone for taking them somewhere? I know I've actually paid friends to drive me places. No difference. Exactly. So there, there's no di- – this is – your property is your property, and that's the way it needs to stay. Now, if you're living in a home and, and smoke is blowing over from your neighbor's house, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to deal with that. Close your windows. I mean, it's not like this, this smoke is, you know, going through walls or something. Come on. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a ridiculous claim. Now, Straight so Razor, if- you – you said something that really sums up all of this. You said your property is your property, and you should be allowed to do with it what you want. But, well, obviously, since there's some city government saying you can't do this, that means this 70-year-old woman does not actually own her house. It's true. The city of San Diego owns her house if they can tell her what to do with it. Exactly. So it's it's just... it's. It's it's wild. Now, if she had chosen to live in some sort of HOA, and don't get me wrong, I'm I'm not a fan of HOAs, and therefore I I choose not to live in areas where they where they exist. Um, now, if she had chosen to live in an area with an HOA that specifically prohibited it, then you've made the choice to live in that area, so you're probably going to have to deal with that. But as far as the government coming in and saying no, you cannot do this. That's absolutely preposterous. I mean, what kind of damages am I doing to the government by having someone else live in my home? Absolutely not. So it's, it's just a crazy scenario. Great call. Yeah. Thanks, Straight Razor. Appreciate hearing uh, Appreciate hearing from you tonight. Our toll-free number, if you want to join us, 855-450-FREE. Maybe you can explain Wayne's viewpoint. Why these codes... The ordinances matter so much. Aren't we just talking about words written down on paper by strangers? Yes. Why should I care what those people think? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Who do they think they are anyway? And who are they besides that? It's Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. 
healthy, organic, fresh fish, robust, mouth-watering vegetables, all from your home. It's called aquaponics. This brilliant, self-sustaining protein and veggie system is perfect for year-round growing. Know exactly where your food is coming from. Aquaponicsource.com is the one-stop shop for all your needs. Fish, fish food, plumbing, full systems, classes, and more. Learn to build your own system. Go to aquaponicsource.com for a free guide to aquaponics. That's aquaponicsource.com. Serious investors and traders want to make an 81% return in 60 seconds. We can show you how using our free tool. Use the same secret algorithm professional hedge fund managers use to make billions of dollars in profits. Turn $250 into $4,903 in just seven clicks of a mouse. Our tool is so simple, my 82-year-old grandmother can use it to make insane stock market profits. Best part, it's 100% free. Go to richmoneyrich.com. Watch the free video before the hedge funds make us take it down. richmoneyrich.com. That's richmoneyrich.com. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenevention.info. Visit Keenevention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. Keenevention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Hey, that neighbor is uh, renting out rooms in her house. We ought to have the government crack down on her so she can have her house stolen from her before she dies. That's essentially what is uh, maybe going to happen to one elderly lady. She is 70 years old. Uh, she had her grandkids help her set up a Airbnb. Her daughter Sorry. helped her set uh, Her daughter she, and granddaughter. She lives in the house with her daughter and granddaughter. Yeah, okay. I thought there was a grand grandkid involved. Here. The daughter helped her set up the Airbnb. Gotcha. She rents out a spare bedroom. In her five-bedroom house in San Diego. Right. And one of the neighbors isn't exactly happy about it. Called a city councilor. City councilor called code enforcement. Code enforcement went out and, well, it said, well, you need a neighborhood use permit to operate a bed and breakfast. She says, but wait a second. Based on your definitions, I'm not operating a bed and breakfast because I've never given anybody breakfast. And you she, said this went to court. Yes. Uh, I've not got there in the story yet, right. but it has already gone through court. You're not going to get there yet either because uh, we got people that want to comment. But we'll, uh, we'll let, 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 me, let me hit yeah. a couple of things real quick before you okay, get sure. back to the phones. She agreed to pay San Diego's 13% hotel tax. Ugh. She retained Payson as her lawyer, and she told the city she would stop renting out her room to Airbnbers. Aww. Until the city council clarified the bed and breakfast ordinance. That's terrible. 
but it didn't end there, and that's how it continues. All right, we'll continue with that here. Also, your calls and thoughts. We go to Mary listening in Kern River, California. Mary, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Danica, and Daryl. Hello. Hi. I just wanted to give a little uh, different perspective. Now, I didn't understand until I just heard you now that it was one room in a house, and I'm assuming she was in the house at the time or no? Was she absentee? Uh, she lives in the house with her daughter and granddaughter in a five-bedroom house, and she rents out one of the guest rooms. Oh, okay. Well, then that's I, that's a little different. I I had a situation with a neighbor that turned her little house into a rental, and it, and she wasn't there. And I the only thing I can say is that it did feel like a little bit of an endangerment being the neighbor so close with a little daughter and and having these people come in and out all the time that could kind of case your place while they're there. And they'd have little parties and music in the yard and it wasn't legal. I mean she wasn't she wasn't zoned for any of that and I never turned her in, and I, actually what I think would have been wise is for the neighbor to go and talk to this woman and talk to her and let her know what she, what troubles her about it. But Well, this neighbor doesn't seem to be—I mean, that's not, a bad, that's not a bad suggestion. This neighbor doesn't seem to be rational at all. I mean, she's not a, she's not a good neighbor. She turns to the government to yeah. solve her problems. And as far as, like, people casing the joint, I mean, I guess I can understand the, the, the fear, but— I mean, had that happened? Did somebody rob your house during that time frame? No, no one, no one robbed my house during that period. But I was a new widow. And actually, that same neighbor that I didn't turn in um, turned turned me in for a little uh, a push out of a wall so that we had a little bigger space because I was I was pregnant at the time. I lost my husband, and the only thing that I I see that um, you know that wasn't great is that they were they'd have like outdoor they they'd have little barbecues and what's play wrong with loud that? Music that nothing nothing except that the music and the pot smells coming over and i got a little daughter and it just it wasn't it wasn't well, what i signed up for yeah i mean uh, it so was the music was going really difficult. late at night Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think there you'd have and a legitimate one, concern. I, I mean, because with, with music yeah. being too loud, you know, that is a sound violation. That is a that yes. is an actual Certainly. physical, yes. you know, that's a physical uh, interruption of your privacy. I, I, no, and I yeah. appreciate that. I'm glad you didn't lower yourself to her level and uh, and snitch. But, yeah, that would have been the right thing to do is to go have a conversation like, hey, you know, yes. your tenants are making too much noise. I'd appreciate it if you could put some rules into place where, you know, that they turn things down. And you could always go over when the party's happening and just, you know, knock and, and introduce yourself. Well, and, I did that. I, I, did, I did that just over the fence. And most people were very nice about it. Yeah, there you it. go. I mean, most people are very nice. Right. You know, it's, that's the general rule of thumb. Right. But and there's nothing wrong with I, smoking I pot. I mean, that's not hurting anybody. Right. So. But when you have dogs, you know, they get used to a neighbor. And my dogs, they had to constantly get used to new neighbors. Mm. You know, and, and things like just little things that I just want to say on the other side of the coin, it's not always the easiest thing to have that happen to you when you're when you are the neighbor, but there are better ways to deal with it. And 25000 for this poor 70-year-old woman, and she's in the house, and it's yeah. only Well, I don't care if she's 35 that, years old. Different. I mean, you know, the fact that her age doesn't make a yeah. difference. It's just that obviously more people will uh, will sympathize yes. with an elderly person. Right. But if she was 20 and renting her house out, I, th I still think that, you know, she should be able to do yeah. that. And I appreciate your neighborliness, and thank you for the call tonight, Mary. I, I do appreciate hearing thank from you. Thank you. Yep, our uh, toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. Just come have a chat, you know, go talk to somebody. And then, like she said, when she did that, when Mary would talk to the, the noisy partiers, they right. would they'd turn it down because, you know, most people can empathize. And they or would, most people right. don't even realize it's gotten that bad. That it's been too loud or yeah. whatever, right? They're, they're in the middle of it. They've had a few drinks. And, uh, you know, if you're, you've had a few drinks, you might tend to get a little bit louder. And yeah, things. if these neighbors had actually done that instead of just be all cowardly and afraid and just call the, you know, call the city on it, I'm willing to bet this would have turned out a lot better. I bet you're right about that. Uh, let's go to Larry in Raleigh listening to Talk Radio 850. Hello, Larry. Hi. You're getting a lot of calls from Raleigh tonight. But uh, first of all, I think there are a lot of assumptions being made and a lot of things that we none of us know all right. about the specifics on this case. To your point, 
No, she doesn't own that house. I mean, she is. Uh, we all know the bank owns the house if we have a mortgage. But the the point here. Well, is no. Even if you've got the mortgage we, we, paid off, you still don't really own it because the state can steal it from that, from under that, you. That, that's true. Yeah. And uh, so here we don't know if there are any ordinances in, in San Diego that specifically require her to get a permit, for example, to have anybody stay there for any length Who of time. Who cares if there are ordinances? Because, because that's we live in a country where, you know, if you want to live in a community and the community gets together and elects people and they ask those people. Well, to wait a minute. I didn't want to get together and elect those people. I didn't elect them. I'm not interested in having well, them tell me what to do. Who are they? What I'm saying is the, the city of San Diego, every community in this country, you have to have some system of laws, some systems of behavior in which people live together as a community. Sure. I think that the law should be real simple. Don't hurt anybody else. How about that? Yeah, well, and we and we fundamentally disagree with that, and and you know I disagree. What other what what you think there's a problem with? You think you should be able to hurt other people? Is that what you're saying? No, I, 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 no, 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 don't twist around what I'm saying. You said we do fundamentally disagree, so you, you we know, agree it's, then. It's, it, 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 it's interesting when someone calls in, like a call a couple of callers ago, who agrees with your point. You give them all kinds of accolades. If someone calls in and disagrees with your point, rather than having a, 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 a rational discussion about it, you jump on them and try to make them sound foolish. Oh, the I'm not trying to make is, you sound the foolish. The You're the one advocating is, for aggression. You're doing a fine job all on your own. I, 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 I never said a word about aggression. We oh, really? That. Well, yes, you are talking about ordinances, right? What do you think that is? Laws are a system under which we live in harmony. Laws are opinions community. backed by a gun, sir. That's all it is. Well, you know what? That's a sad commentary on your— on, No, on it's your a sad commentary on what your right. system is, because that's what it is, and right? Damage, the, Laws the, the are damage, people's the, opinions the who the usually system, you don't know is, that they back up with I, men with guns. Is there something inaccurate about that statement? I, I think if there are laws and people are breaking the laws and the man with the shiny badge comes in and he sets things right according to what the community has agreed <laughs> are the rules they're going to live under. Hold on, hold Pathetic. on. So at one time, it was the law in this country that if someone ran away from their slave master, that you were obligated to try to find that runaway slave and return him to his master. Is that a and law a that you would have and, and, broken, or would you have followed yeah. that because it was the law? Here you go once again. Uh, that law ultimately did not stand up, and it was changed, and we fought a battle to change that law because people felt it was so— You didn't answer the uh, question, armed. though. No, you, you hit me with a false uh, premise. That's not a false You're, premise. No, it's, it's, there was a law at one time in this country that said that you were obligated to find a runaway slave and return him to his master. I'm asking if you were alive during that time, would you have followed that law or would you have broken that law, sir? I, I probably would have acted in civil disobedience and not followed that law. Oh, but good for you. You are, you, are, you are taking this thing in an entirely different direction. Well, you've gone a long way from a woman who apparently is breaking an ordinance in the city of San Diego. The You're the one that said that laws are written down and should be enforced, and I'm trying to find I, out if there's a law that you think should not be enforced. I'm glad that there and is. And we've agreed that you at least would not have participated in the Fugitive Slave Act. Right, I'm glad that, you, Thank you. right, I'm glad that you've taken the side of civil disobedience when it comes to bad laws, Larry, because it's good people who disobey bad laws, and there's still plenty of bad laws that are on the books right now, bad statutes, bad ordinances. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. Thank you, Larry, for your call. We'll come back. Hour number two is on the way. This is Free Talk Live. We're coming up. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Kid, let me paint you a picture. Tuesday night, your cog belt goes bust. Who will help you get what you need fast? Without the hoops, hurdles, or headaches? Granger, that's who. I love Granger. They got a wide variety of products and solutions. Granger makes it easy to get everything we need and answers for when we're not sure what the answer is. Now, kid, let me paint you another picture. It looks like a mop, a basement bathroom, and you, all over it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. 
you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 14th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.50 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,119 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $266. Antiwar.com reports when it was announced that the U.S. and Turkey were going to unite against the Islamic State, there was an immediate announcement of talks underway to establish a safe zone in northern Syria along the Turkish border. It would be 60 miles long. That was all that was known. Weeks later, that's still all that is known, with Syrians unclear if they'll be part of the safe zone, who will be in charge of the region, how it will be safe, or indeed how the U.S. and Turkey even intend to make such a safe zone happen since both are ruling out any use of ground troops. While the timing initially fueled assumptions that the zone would include a lot of the Islamic State territory, more recent suggestions are that this is not actually what will happen and that the territory will be further west, carved more out of Kurdish territory than the Islamic State territory as Turkey shifts its war focus against the Kurds. Locals have heard all these plans to end the war before and the talk of an imminent safe zone is just the latest empty promise and the US and Turkey comments are just another PR front for an unworkable scheme that will eventually fall by the wayside in favor of more bombings. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy, and for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports three years after lawmakers abolished the death penalty in Connecticut, the state Supreme Court ruled Thursday the execution of any inmate still on death row is unconstitutional. In April 2012, Connecticut Governor Daniel Malloy signed a bill making the death penalty illegal in the state for any crime committed after April 25, 2012. That left 11 convicts on death row still eligible for execution, though. The state Supreme Court said Thursday it would be cruel and unusual punishment to now execute those inmates mates, including Eduardo Santiago, who requested the court review the issue. Judge Richard Palmer in the majority decision wrote, Upon careful consideration of the defendant's claims in light of the governing constitutional principles and Connecticut's unique historical and legal landscape, we are persuaded that, following its prospective abolition, the state's death penalty no longer comports with contemporary standards of decency and no longer serves any legitimate penological purpose. Justice Chase Rogers dissented, writing the majority of opinion was fundamentally flawed and based on a house of cards. 19 states and the District of Columbia have abolished the death penalty, and Connecticut was the 16th state to do so in 2012. The 11 inmates spared the death penalty will instead receive life in prison without the possibility of parole. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a Kentucky County Clerk's Office on Thursday defied a federal judge's order by continuing to block marriage licenses for same-sex couples, saying the legal case was still pending. The Rowan County Clerk's Office turned away at least three same-sex couples who tried to get marriage licenses, according to local media and court documents. Kim Davis, the Rowan County Clerk, who stopped issuing all marriage licenses following the U.S. Supreme Court's June ruling that legalized same-sex marriage, is on vacation. Nathan Davis, a relative who also worked at the clerk's office told Reuters the office was not currently taking licenses because of active litigation. He declined further comment. In a court filing, plaintiff April Miller said she and Karen Roberts tried on Thursday to obtain a marriage license shortly before noon and were rebuffed. On Wednesday, U.S. District Court Judge David Bunning issued a preliminary injunction ordering Davis's office to process license applications for all couples, saying she had to live up to her responsibility as a county clerk. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is William Chambers, now a retired insurance salesman. Chambers is just one of over 95% of grandfathers who, according to a new report from the Center of Business Intelligence, secured their first and only job by walking right up to the owner of a business and asking for a position right then and there. I slammed my fist on the desk and said, I'm your man. He stood right up. He shook my hand and he said, you come in first thing Monday morning. According to the report, nearly 36% of grandfathers claim that they found employment by entering a local business with nothing but a nickel in their pockets and a shirt on their backs. 24% saw a fine looking marquee for a business and said, someday my name's going to be on that sign. And 40% of grandfathers said they snuck into the CEO's office and said, Mr. McKinley, sir, I'm your guy. It just took gumption. You didn't need some fancy internship looking the boss dead in the eye and showing him you were a man. That was your internship. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live. We got more coming up on the Airbnb crackdown happening in San Diego on a lady 70 years old who had the courage to rent a room. That's all she was doing. She was using the Airbnb system, which is like a, a room sharing service or a house sharing service, sort of like uh, Uber and Lyft are these ride sharing services that allow people with an existing house or car or whatever to rent out that space uh, to somebody. And that's what this lady was doing. She was doing it successfully for a little while until her neighbors decided to target her and uh, essentially use the government to threaten this lady. Now she's looking at a $25,000 fine. And uh, it's Ian, Danica, and Daryl in this studio tonight. Daryl, you've got more to that story yes. here. Uh, let's go ahead with that because I know we're uh, we're getting close to, uh, to finishing it up. Just to recap, $25,000. This has gone to court, apparently. Yes. Even though... She pointed out that the ordinance specifically states that in order to qualify as a bed and breakfast, one must actually serve breakfast. Yes. So she's saying, hey, I didn't violate the city's own ordinances in this case. Right. And I, I just want to back up a yeah. sentence here. She agreed to pay the 13% hotel or occupancy tax. That's sad. She retained a lawyer. And she told the city she would stop renting out her room through Airbnb until the city council clarified the statute about a bed and breakfast. Which could take forever. That's a terrible thing for her to agree to do. I agree. It, it was a horrible ever. thing. But at least she, you know, she's saying like. She backed down. I, I, I'll, I'll work with you. I'll work with you. Just don't she's take being all a good of my neighbor. money. She's being a good neighbor and trying to work things out. Well, and by work with you, you mean back down completely at that point. Because if she's shutting Essentially. down. Right. Because if she right. says, well, I'm not going to rent the room until the city council clarifies the ordinance, you're not going to rent the room because the city council is under no obligation whatsoever to clarify that ordinance. Right. Uh, her neighbors were still suspicious and believed that she was continuing to rent out her room. 
even after she had promised to stop hosting travelers. Payson, that's the lawyer, says their suspicions likely arose from Smith's rich social life. In February of this year, one of Smith's neighbors told City Hall they had reason to believe that she was still renting out her room through Mm. Airbnb, even though records obtained from Airbnb show otherwise. Really? Smith told a local news outlet, one of the neighbors came over very frantic, saying she just couldn't take it anymore, but would not tell me what happened. Smith added, I'm a good neighbor. I have always intended to be a good neighbor. Unfortunately, it seems that gossip and subterfuge and tattling to city officials is more neighborly where I now live. The lawyer says the real issue is an understandable question of policy. Some people believe that none of this should be happening in residential neighborhoods. The statute defining a bed and breakfast is murky and the zoning policy needs to be clarified, said the lawyer. And a clarified version of the zoning code is currently being drafted, or so they claim. Hmm. Smith has consistently contended that she has never offered breakfast, just a bed to sleep in. But the administrative law judge, Catriona Miller, sided with the San Diego City Council on August 5th. Wow. Ruling, quote, while Smith did not serve breakfast regularly in this establishment, it is the type of establishment where breakfast is typically oh, served. Oh, come on. Oh, my God. Come on. Passon said, I can say with certainty that Airbnb is not involved in the case. They have not offered to help in any way. They wanted to make sure I was clear about that. Smith's huh. intention to file a lawsuit against the city is still being discussed. Vice News contacted Airbnb to request comment on Smith's predicament. In response, Airbnb shared a letter that the director of public policy, David Owen, sent on Tuesday to the mayor of San Diego. The letter states in part, regular San Diegans like Rachel should not be penalized. Accordingly, we are calling for the city to stay the full amount of Myth Smith's fine and suspend enforcement efforts against other home sharers until the city council completes its consideration of the code changes. And that's where it stands. Yes. This happened less than or just over a week ago. Wow. They likely aren't trying to get too involved because obviously they don't want to make it so that Airbnb can't be used at all in San Diego. Well, that's likely. what the San Diego people are trying to, that's what the gang, the Certainly. government gang is trying to accomplish. I think that's sad though because uh, it's my understanding that Uber, the ride-sharing service, does stand behind its drivers. When their drivers get in trouble with the, the law, when they get tickets and they get you know, busted and arrested as uh, recently happened in Hong Kong and has happened in places like New York City, uh, then Uber actually helps them and and gives them legal services and helps them, you know, provides lawyers in in a lot of those cases. That's what I've been told, at least my understanding. Uh, We've had Uber drivers call the show and talk about that. So what a shame that Airbnb is not standing behind this lady in a a more full manner. And I, I do think it's very telling that the lawyer had to make sure that he clarified that Airbnb is Wasn't not involved. involved in this case. Zach, you're in Chicago. You're on Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want listening via TuneIn. Go ahead, Zach. Hey, so I don't know if you remember, but a while ago I called in asking for your guys' opinion on the Coast Guard and saying that I was like going to join it and I couldn't pay for college, and this is what I thought I was going to do. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we tried to uh, talk you out of it and suggested that you know, you might have to do things against your will, things that you don't agree with. If you're a liberty-oriented person as a Coast Guard member, like take someone's freedom away from them for trying to make a better life for themselves or uh, to, you know, transport some product from point A to point B. And uh, you, you know, hopefully or steal someone's belongings because they're right. trying to transport a product from point A to point B. Yeah, that you'd be under, uh, you know, that you'd be under orders, and if you didn't do those things, that you could possibly get in some uh, some hot water. So yeah, I do recall that call. Yeah, so I did go ahead and decide not to join. I like finalized that and ended communications with the recruiter and all that stuff. Um, and I'm actually right now making plans, and I'm about to sign up for the Free State Project, and I'm planning on moving out to New Hampshire next year, like around summertime. And um, actually, the reason I called is because I had, you know, recently made this decision. And I was wondering if you guys knew of any, like, websites or anything like that that I could look at for job postings around the teen area, if there's, like, any websites that 
you know, the people use around there to post jobs and stuff like that because definitely need money. Well, there's a lot more to look at besides just Keene. I mean, if you're looking for, for work, uh, the big cities like Manchester and Nashua are more likely to have more options for you. If you do have your heart set on Keene for some reason, you're certainly, uh, you can look at, there's like an NH job postings list Indeed. on Facebook. Com, Craigslist can be good too. Uh, those were two that I Craigslist used. Craigslist has a lot of yeah. listings really? on there. Uh, although a lot of the listings are basically repost from the same temp agencies where they repost the same stuff And there's stuff a lot of temp agencies, day. but there are a lot of individual ones. I will kind of give you a little the bit The local of- newspaper also has a fairly decent online classified hmm. section. I, I would say the online is actually better than what is in print. I'm going to give you a little bit of word of caution just from my experiences. Uh, Keen is great for entry-level positions, and it's a lot more difficult to find something that's a little bit more pay scale high. So just be forewarned that you might have to do a little bit more digging as far as a higher salary. Job. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking for something specific, uh, you know, there are, like I said, the more populated areas will probably be more likely like something specific to a skill or whatever. If you don't care and you're just willing to work a retail job, then you can find those a all restaurant. over. restaurant. Yeah, yeah, you can find those all over New Hampshire. And there are some people that will live in like the Nashua area and commute down to Boston because it's only like an hour away but i think you still have to pay massachusetts income tax if you work down there you um you do if you work down there yeah yeah. zach uh any other questions i was gonna go to Keene state too so i don't know if you guys know of any like libertarian or like free state project groups that are linked to the state college or anything like that no they Uh, likely don't there's a keen (laughs) cannabis that's not true there's plenty of people that uh, at the college that that like the activists um there's actually quite a few of them but, uh, in fact, uh, if you ever go out doing cop blocking, Danica, you'll experience that the college students absolutely love cop block. Oh, instance. I'm sure the students do. The school itself, Oh, you meant the school so administrators? <laughs> I don't know. I imagine they, they have different opinions. But uh, there is the Keene Cannabis Coalition there at the Keene State College. That would probably be the most liberty-friendly group on campus. I, I would love to see somebody start a Students for Liberty on Keene State. Yeah, that'd be awesome. If somebody's an, a, a go-getter and a doer and a leader, then uh, there's definitely opportunity there. Hey, Zach, uh, let us know how that goes, and thanks for your call tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-453. You can Skype in. Skype usernames lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. This message is for home intruders, the cowards who break into people's homes to steal their hard-earned property, criminals who shatter lives and rob people of their privacy and security. Listen very carefully. We're the home security experts at LiveWatch, and we're taking you down. Because we're letting everyone try our newest home security system for one full year in their home. To take advantage of this amazing offer, call now, 1-800-670-9259. LiveWatch has been helping protect homes for years, and we've learned the secrets that intruders like you don't want people to know. Criminals, it's time for you to be afraid, because every person who calls will be protected against cowards like you. To the criminals listening, we're taking you down. To those who want to help protect their homes, call the security experts to try the LiveWatch security system. There are no long-term contracts, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can cancel at any time. Try LiveWatch now by calling 1-800-670-9259. That's 1-800-670-9259. It's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader, My Patriot Supply. Once you try them, you'll know why so many Americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan. Experience the My Patriot Supply difference today with this unbelievable offer. Right now, a four-week food supply is only $99, and that includes free shipping. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-274-3070 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last. This offer isn't available online, so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today. 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food supply for the incredible price of only $99, and it'll be shipped to you completely free. Call 800-274-3070 right now. That's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last. Don't wait. Call today. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. 
You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here at 855-450-FREE. We've actually had a couple people call in the show tonight to express to us how important these words on paper are. They call them ordinances in a lot of cities and towns. Uh, at the state level, usually they're called statutes. At the federal level, they're called code because they're written like code and it's hard as hell to understand anything that they actually say. Uh, apparently, these things are so important because strange people have uh, voted to elect other strange people to write these things down on paper then other men uh, and women with guns will come and uh, point them at you if you don't do what those words on paper say. Even if those words on paper say that you're to do the most vile, reprehensible thing, well, it's on paper, so you have to do it. In this case, uh, the lady in question, 70 years old, she was running an Airbnb house. And that just basically means she's renting out a room temporarily to people who are there on vacation or business or whatever their reasons to uh, to come to town. Danica, you've actually done this in yes. Manhattan, and you got a room for 100 bucks a night in a city in which you can't get a hotel room for less than $200. Yeah, you can't really do it. It's just not even an option. Yeah, so, absolutely. Anyway, this is saving people big money. And, and it's a ni you know, and Manhattan is the touristy part of New York City, regardless. But I mean, it was still in a very nice, nicest area, and mm -hmm. it was very close to where I was going, so it was totally convenient. And I could check in early. I, you know, he was very flexible. Like it's just, it's so much better than staying in a hotel. And you, right, you're, uh, you know, you get to kind of get to know the proprietor in some cases, I imagine, rather yeah. than having sort of an anonymous hotel experience with, you know, people you don't really get to connect with. And so it looks like, to me, it would be a totally different experience. It's a more affordable experience, more of an intimate uh, experience as well. Absolutely. And obviously, a lot of people are into this. It seems to be going very well, generally, for Airbnb. And I imagine it's a little bit harder for the state to do a crackdown on this, although I suppose they could still just look in their area and see what's available and then run sting operations against them. You know, I had... I've been hearing all these news about Uber and Lyft getting hit with so many lawsuits and so many cease and desist. And they got I, raided, actually. Yeah, and I was just thinking, you know, I wonder if it's ever going to happen to Airbnb, and sure enough, it there has. You go. And it's super unfortunate. And this isn't the only story. This is just the mo most recent of them. It's right. got a big price right. tag on it, I had not heard really any stories about uh, any sort of interference with Airbnb until right now. So. $25,000. The judge Ugh. in this case said that she acknowledged 
that the woman who was running this Airbnb operation wasn't actually providing breakfast, so therefore that doesn't meet the qualification legally. It shouldn't meet the qualification of actually being a bed and breakfast legally. But she went ahead and said, I don't know if you have that quote in front of you, Daryl. It was pretty shocking. She went ahead and it basically it, This is the type of place where you would normally get breakfast. You would breakfast. normally find it. Right. So because guilty by association. Could. Guilty because, by association. Right. Because the woman could have made someone breakfast, apparently was reason enough to find her guilty and assess this $25,000 right. fine. It, it, it would be akin to going into a restaurant, a, a sit-down family-owned restaurant that has pool tables and a jukebox and charging them with selling liquor without a license. The owner says, but sir... I don't sell liquor, so I don't yeah. need a license. Well, it doesn't matter. This is the type of place where someone would normally find liquor. <laughs> yeah, it's that's, the, same, that's the thing. same thing. And maybe they would have a chance uh, with overturning this if they actually went to a, a real court because they did go to an administrative court, which isn't the same as right. like a superior court or something like that. And uh, that would be a fine argument, I think, for a lawyer to actually make in front of a, right. a judge. Right, and the article did say that she's uh, still in discussions with her lawyer about, about possibly suing the city. Oh, I hope she does. I wonder if she can appeal, though, the case. Probably. Hmm. I All don't right. know. It, it might be that sort of thing where uh, the city of Keene took you to the Department of Safety's administrative hearing, and there's no way to appeal that. There actually was a right to appeal that. However, I did not exercise that right because it would cost $260. So it's kind of funny to call it a right uh, to appeal when the appeal costs a couple hundred bucks. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't think you were allowed to appeal that decision. That's yeah. why they took you there because there was the lesser burden. Well, that is what they it did. It was a preponderance of evidence not beyond a reasonable doubt. No, I mean, that is why they took me to the Department of Motor Vehicles for what you're referring to was an attack on me, which they also came after you for the same thing. They actually went at you through the courts. And they yes, went at me and I was DMV. convicted. Um, and essentially they were accusing us of not being uh, or of being residents, but have not gotten the proper well, without fulfilling the paperwork. obligations thereof, which and is to register a car. And- I, I contend that I am not a resident of New Hampshire because they have written in their rules that if you claim residency in another place for any reason, you're not a New Hampshire resident. And doesn't well, matter though. Does I've it? got a piece of plastic that expires on my 65th birthday from the state of Arizona, where I lived for a while before I moved to Texas, before I moved here. So I claim residency there for the purpose of having a piece of plastic that says that I can operate a vehicle. But it doesn't matter what the law said. It just like in this old lady's case, same thing happened to you. You are saying to this judge, "Hey." I am claiming residency in this other place, and he's just saying, well, too bad. You're a resident here now. Right. And the funny thing is uh, there there was a copy of my driver's license that was issued as some kind of evidence of something by the prosecution, which I contend is evidence Evidence. of my claim of residency somewhere else for a purpose. But it just goes to show they can ignore the words on paper. Yes. It doesn't matter what the words on paper say. And so all these people, we had two of them call in tonight, these people who believe, well, the law is the law. Kneelers, people who kneel in front of the king or something like that. Yeah, so it's a Game of Thrones reference. Uh, So there are the free folk, Mm -hmm. and they refer to people that kneel before a king as kneelers. So the people who are the kneelers of the world, the obedient folks, they believe, they have this fantasy about the world they're living in and the, the, this governmental system, and that is that the law is this ironclad thing. Those words on paper are so important. You voted for people who wrote those words down, and this is the system that we live in, and if you don't like those words, then you should fight to change them. But what good does it do if you fight to change the words and the judges ignore the words anyway and they would interpret them in insane ways that just don't even make sense to reality? Right, and I, I've got sort of another question here. If the words can be changed, then why do you support them so much? Because, you know, like, are, are you supporting support it now the because the of what it says? Are you going to support it if it says something else? Yes, generally they will. They'll yes, begrudgingly, I know they will. They'll begrudgingly in some cases. I remember when the Obamacare thing was happening several years ago when there was all the hubbub about, I think it was like 2010 or something like that. Yeah, uh, like 2009 yeah. uh, is when there was 
the big debate on it. It passed in early 2010. There were so many people, uh, let's call them uh, conservative types, who were all up in arms about Obamacare. And look, I'm no fan of the idea of government health care. I don't support the Obamacare thing at all. I don't support government uh, regulations for health care either. But for the people who are so upset about it, we actually talked to some of them on the air, and you know, we had one of them admit that, well, if it goes as and passes anyway, they'll just go ahead and pay for it, and they'll they'll jump through the hoops, and they'll do whatever it is they're told to do because that's the system. And the idea, I think, behind that, Daryl, is this sort of reverence for the United States, the reverence for the state, uh, the system in which they live, that also the belief that someday they could wrest control back and then uh, forced their version of the system on the people who forced this version on them. It's a real sick kind of uh, cycle of abuse process, I think, that's sort of behind some of these uh, these folks. 855-450-FREE. That is our toll-free number. We've got Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Coming up, Hong Kong police raid the Uber office. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you, too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Planning to buy food storage? Wait a minute. Many companies try to confuse you with the number of servings they sell. It's not about the number of servings, it's about the number of calories. In emergencies, calories mean survival. Go to ReadySupplyFoods.com for a comparison of leading companies. Ready Supply Foods sells the most calories per dollar of any company. Our 23 entrees and breakfasts are delicious and full of nutritious calories. The new leader in value and quality. Go to ReadySupplyFoods.com today. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbricht's life sentence to see that. After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is... Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more. So go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends. Share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget freeross.org. This is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $3 higher at $1,119 per ounce. Silver is up $0.07 cents at $15.57 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $265 U.S. dollars. With oil and other commodities sinking, seeing rising prices in gold and silver is very encouraging for precious metals. For more information, give us a call, 800 874 9760 or visit our website at rrbi.co. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you get five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. It's the Onion Radio News. The nation's last remaining themeless restaurant has closed. This is Doyle Redland reporting. A once vibrant era came to an end today when Pat's Place, the nation's last themeless restaurant, closed its doors in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. During the heyday of themeless restaurants, Pat's Place achieved a certain amount of notoriety for its unique non-themed food items and unadorned atmosphere. But according to owner Patrick Baines, the times have changed. Lately, we've had only a handful of people coming in to gawk at our posterless walls and mundanely named menu items like hamburgers or pancakes. And then they go someplace like the Rainforest Cafe or Johnny Rockets to actually eat. 
Plans are now in the works to convert the Pat's Place location into Cedar Rapids' seventh patio touchdown sports bar and good time internet grill. Doyle Redland for the Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're here. We'll take your calls about whatever you want to discuss. It doesn't have to be the crackdown on the freedom, or at least the freedom you might have thought you had, to do as you wish with your property, whether it be your car, in the case of uh, Uber or Lyft, or I think Sidecar is another one. And these are these ride-sharing companies that have sprouted up over the last several years and have done a great job of bringing fresh competition and innovation to the uh, the transportation industry. And oftentimes the cars are nicer than your actual taxi yeah. car, too, and they're more no, comfortable. I agree. I've been in an Uber a couple of times Same now, here. and uh, yeah, I've been very impressed with the quality of the car involved in that. Uh, so there's that, and then now Airbnb, this idea of sharing one's property by allowing people to rent out a couch or a spare bedroom or an entire house. Maybe you're out of town for a summer and you want somebody to rent your house for the summer. You could probably use Airbnb to accomplish that. Yeah, it's like subletting. It's also sure. a form of subletting. And, you, you know, some people stay longer than others. And now one lady mm-hmm. is under attack in San Diego with a $25,000 fine. But she's not the only person who's under attack in these various different organizations around the globe the folks behind Uber have been facing a lot of opposition from government officials. Now, I got to say, you know, there's some things about Uber I don't like. There's apparently a rule that Uber cab drivers or Uber drivers cannot carry a weapon. They can't have a gun. Mm. I don't know if there's a total weapons ban, but I know there's a no guns rule. Even in states that do allow open carry, such as, say, New Hampshire or anything. It's my understanding that if you're an Uber driver, uh, you are not supposed to be carrying. Now, of course, there's no one checking you before you go out on the road. So, you know, the I think that an Uber driver who really just didn't care about that particular rule would obviously be risking their association with Uber by continuing to carry a weapon. But if there was a situation where you needed to have that gun and then it resulted in Uber dropping their allegiance with you or whatever, if you couldn't work for them anymore after that, probably better to have your life than to have your association with Uber. Yes. So I would, you know, there are some rules that uh, I think should be broken, and I don't have a problem with somebody carrying a gun in their own car to defend themselves. The idea that Uber would be able to have any say over that, I think, is pretty insulting. But it is their company, and they can make up whatever rules that they want for their drivers to follow. Uh, So if you want to join us here, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You know, there's a movement. We were talking about Obamacare a moment ago. There's a movement in healthcare today. It's a movement of people that are ready to stand up and take charge of their health care. People like you and me who are tired of paying too much for health care and getting too little. People who are standing up for their values and letting their conscience make decisions based on timeless principles. It's a movement that's sweeping the nation, and you should be part of it. Liberty Health Share is leading the movement of people who are looking for an alternative to traditional health insurance. Liberty Health Share is a health care sharing organization of people who are sharing the cost of health care in an easy and efficient way. You can choose your own doctor, your own hospital, and live out your values in health care. Join their movement and let's change health care for good. LibertyHealthShare.org. Just go to LibertyHealthShare.org or you can call them toll free at 855 855- 58 Liberty. That's libertyhealthshare.org, 855 58 Liberty. As we continue, it's Ian here with you tonight. Danica and Daryl. The crackdown on Uber continues since we're talking about sharing things and how the government hates this because it's a essentially it's a threat to the old world. It's a threat to the good old boys network. It's a threat to the people who have paid for their licensing fees for decades. They hate this. They hate the fact that somebody could do business and have success without having to ask some government bureaucrats permission first. Not only do the government guys hate it because they're missing out on revenue, but the old established businesses are also frustrated by this because they're being outcompeted in a lot of different ways. Yeah, and I was actually reading something earlier today. Apparently, Hillary Clinton doesn't like it 
Because she Uber? sees it as Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, okay. a- anything that she describes as the gig economy or the peer-to-peer economy. She claims that it's employers taking advantage of employees by unfairly classifying them as contractors. contractors. And she also said stealing their wages. But I, I don't know That's where ridiculous. she is you know, coming up with any of that from. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, yeah I don't know about the stealing their wages, but we have heard the argument about, the uh, you know, this is somehow Uber screwing people over. Uh, there's certain people in unions who are making those claims. They want Uber drivers to be unionized, and that's just a, a mess. We can talk more about why the left hates these things. You've got an article about that, Daryl, yes. in a little bit. But here's the crackdown on Hong Kong's Uber office where there was actually a raid And multiple arrests of drivers, Uber's worldwide expansion plans have hit yet another legal bump. This according to TechCrunch.com. Five Uber drivers have been arrested in Hong Kong yesterday. Uh, This was actually posted a couple days ago. Allegedly for operating without a hire car permit and driving without proper insurance. Two of Uber's local offices were also raided and three staff members detained. According to the South China Morning Post, Hong Kong Police Senior Inspector Bruce Hung told reporters that undercover police officers used an app to call five cars and then arrested the drivers after reaching their destination. So they were doing undercover sting operations in Hong Kong. Now, this is not just happening in Hong Kong. There was a story a few uh, couple months ago about f- uh, nearly 500 cars have been impounded by New York City government Goons. There was a story that I read recently. I don't remember if it was Florida or California where they had attractive women stand on the side of the street, like waving down drivers saying, I I just need to go right up the street. I'm late for an appointment, something. And they they, they didn't have time to put the order in on Uber. Right. Yeah. I I don't have time. Like, my phone's dead. I, I can't put it in. Can you put it in on your phone and I'll just give you cash? And then anybody that was like, yeah, okay, whatever, wound up, all right, and now here's your citation for this, and Mm -hmm. you're coming with us now. It's awful. These arrests come a few weeks after protests against Uber and other car hailing apps began to intensify, with traditional taxi drivers claiming their counterparts operate without higher car permits. During a demonstration at the end of July, Tu Sun Tong, a spokesman for the Mobile Transport Workers General Union, said some of its members had seen their revenue drop by 20% due to the proliferation of car hailing apps like Uber. Oh, those poor babies. These old taxi cab companies are losing customers. They are claiming that they deserve those customers, that they have been around for so long and they've paid all their licensing fees and they've jumped through the arbitrary hoops the government has put up. So therefore, they deserve to keep all those customers who are now leaving to go to better options because there's a better option in the marketplace doing something new, doing something exciting and innovative. These guys feel like they've had their customers stolen from them. But the thing is, you don't own your customers. How about this, Mr. Taxi Driver? Why don't you join Uber or Lyft and start making better money? Well, this is the uh, spokesman for the Mobile Workers General Union. He doesn't even drive a cab. Well, that's what I'm saying is that if you're if these taxi drivers are complaining about losing money, why don't you get with the times then and start driving for Uber and Lyft? I'm you can probably make more money and it's going to be more convenient for you. You can work around a schedule that will allow you to have time for your family. Yeah, you can set your own hours. Yes, if you're an Uber driver, you can just basically. Log into the app as a driver, and, and you then don't even have to work. And you don't even have to worry about cash because it's all done through card transactions. So there's That's not, true. you know, no need to exchange cash if you don't want to. Sadly, though, Uber does not support Bitcoin at this point, so you do have to still Boo. use a Boo. credit card. So again, there are problems with Uber, but it's not. Isn't the, there a Bitcoin ride hailing? Thing. I, a, I know that's been talked about. There's something that is in development that is kind of clunky called Lazoo's. Yeah, that's, that's the one. L A Z O O Z. Last time I looked, it was not really ready for prime time yet at all. So I don't know how, when that's going to come along, but that's a cool idea. The concept there, Daryl, for those that have not I know AgriCab accepts Bitcoin, but unfortunately they're only in New Hampshire at this time. I don't know if AgriCab's in business at this time. No. Um, but anyway, the uh, the thing with Lazoo's is they're cutting out the middleman. So right. Lazoo's would decentralize if it actually happens or when. Maybe it'll be called something else. 
But this uh, decentralized ride sharing would eliminate the idea of Uber from this and just basically have an app that is sort of open source programmed that allows people in cars to connect with people who need rides. So where there's no central company for the government to go after at all. It's Free Talk Live. You take control. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. So I say to Mark at lunch, look, you know, I keep hearing from the government that, you know, they're worried someday ISIS may get here. And I go, duh, uh, Garland, Texas, Muhammad cartoon shooting. ISIS is already here. I'm not waiting for these people to defend me. I, if they don't know ISIS is here already, they got no clue. I'm taking care of myself. Guns80.com, AR-15 kits, 30-shot magazines, great prices. They've even got the Hillary special. Guns80.com, that's 844-2-GUNS-80, guns80.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Yes, it is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free. 
And bring up whatever you want to discuss here at 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm with you tonight. Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. And don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features on our site. They are totally free. We do accept Bitcoin. If you want to send over a little Bitcoin to Free Talk Live, do it via our tip jar over at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. What's that you say? You've yet to buy any Bitcoin? Well, you should go and do that through ExpressCoin, the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Litecoin, as well as Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive, and they're a licensed money services business. You can get cryptocurrencies with money order or check by starting off at ExpressCoin.com, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada. Uh, you can even do it from your smartphone. They've got an app. Go to ExpressCoin.com to get started and use coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live, to get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no transfer fee at all. So that's ExpressCoin.com with coupon code FTL. Let's go to Charles, listening in Arizona. Charles, you're on Free Talk Live. Yes, hello. Uh, uh, concerning, the, uh, concerning this poor woman in uh, California, uh, I mentioned to your screener this might sound extreme, but it's in the same vein. Uh, following the rule of law, uh, People were uh, uh, told how to uh, manage their property uh, as to where and how they lived. It was called the Warsaw Ghetto. <laughs> hey, really? <laughs> and as far as uh, regulators and administrative law judges, I've been an activist for decades, and I've gone up against all these people uh, uh <laughs> I can't say on the air what they can do with regulators and administrative law judges, but uh, I had a, a ruling go against me from an ALJ, and uh, you can fight it. You have to go to a, a federal district court, which in my case, I'm on the very uh, western border of Arizona, mm -hmm. and I was hoping to go to Kingman, which I could have done as not that far, but... In order to file my appeal, I would have had to have gone to Phoenix, and it was totally impossible for me. So, uh, physically impossible. It, yeah. Uh, well, I you know, uh, yeah, physically and financially, right. I was just impossible to do. Right. And, I mean, uh, if you can't afford the filing fee on a, a court case, you essentially don't have any rights. Right. Well, no. Yeah. There, there's there's a different. Uh, there's two types of law. You know. If you're rich or if you're yeah. poor. There's the law for uh, for them, which is, of course, completely flexible and fluid, and in any moment they, uh, ju a government judge can decide uh, what it means and how it applies. And then there's the law for the rest of us, which tends to be applied a whole lot more consistently. And uh, although, as you point out, if you've got enough money, you can somehow, in some oh, cases, uh, get out of it. Absolutely, absolutely. I, uh, I've run across this uh, more than once. I believe uh, you, Charles. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Join us on Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Back to the story. Uber crackdown continuing in Hong Kong. Not just Hong Kong, though. It's happening all around the globe in different cities and different countries. Uh, this is one of the more violent tactics, more overt, overtly violent tactics with the government literally coming in and raiding their offices, uh, calling drivers via the app and then arresting them after they reach their destination. The arrests have come a few weeks after protests against Uber and other car hailing apps have began to intensify, uh, intensify. And not just in Hong Kong, but also I saw a video about a week ago. Mexico was also having the taxi cab operators protesting against Uber. And sometimes these protests are getting violent. Like there was a video footage I saw of taxi drivers throwing rocks and other items at Uber cars, busting out, uh, you know, glass. Did, from... did they have the big giant inflatable rat and were they yelling scab? What? No, that happens in New York City, though. <laughs> I've seen the inflatable rat in person, actually. A Can couple you explain of times. the inflatable rat? Yeah, so the inflatable rat is something that unionists or supporters of unions will bring out to their uh, anti-union, like their pro-union rallied oh, against okay. people that 
you know, like say some company people went on strike and the company's like, all right, we're just going to hire people that will work for what we're willing to pay. They'll stand out with a rat and they'll yell scab at people. And sometimes they'll try to physically prevent someone from going to work. And so, what does the like, rat identify? What does it? What does it mean? What does it stand for? Yeah, what's you're a rat. Name? Like you're 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 a scab. You're a rat. Okay, rat so, usually suggests you're snitching on somebody, but in this case, it, you know, like, this you're, just means you're, 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 being, you're being sneaky and like you're, undercutting yeah, you're, us. You're, you're being okay. sneaky. You're undermining us. So, like the whole thing of you know, unions are supposedly pro labor. Mm-hmm. And they claim it's labor versus management, but oh. what it really is, and these protests really show you it's labor versus labor to where it's these people that want right. to organize labor versus unorganized labor. right the, these people that want to make sure that they have a quote unquote living wage will wind up not working to show that they need a living wa- like that right. that's never made sense to me like I'm going to show you how much I need to work by not going to work <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Uber, by the way, here is uh, under attack by the Motor Transport Workers General Union, claiming that their revenues dropped in some cases by 20 percent due to the Uber proliferation. While Uber checks if drivers have mandated third party insurance as part of its standard screening process, it's unclear if the company requires or plans to require drivers to hold what are, are called car hire car permits in uh in hong kong now there are similar terminology in other big cities We're talking new york about city ca- calls them medallions taxi, taxi medallions. medallions in a statement and by the way in new york city and i don't know if this is true in hong kong but it might be uh but in a lot of cities they restrict the number of taxi medallions yes so you cannot get if you go to new york city even if you have the six hundred thousand or eight hundred thousand dollars that are, they cost i've these heard days. it's close to a million it's close to a million is, is in now? some ways okay. yeah i know it, several years ago it was around half a million uh, but uh, if you've got the hundreds of thousands of dollars, nearly a million dollars that it takes to get one of these taxi medallions, you may not even be able to get it because there may not be any available. So the mm-hmm. only way to get it would be to acquire it from an existing uh, medallion holder, say somebody who wants to leave the right. business. And I, I had heard something, and I don't know if this is necessarily true, but New York City also limits the number of permits that they give for restaurants and food establishments mm. so what they do le- i think limit food truck so permits. what uh yeah. may- maybe it's food truck so what the permit holders will do if they're going to not be doing it anymore they will like sell it on the black market that's right because nobody can buy one legally through city hall right or they'll rent it out as well yeah uh, so, so Uber, uh, let's see, in a statement, their spokes, spoke per, uh, spokesperson from North Asia, Uber, says, quote, Hong Kongers have made it clear they want more, better transportation options in our city, and Uber is deeply committed to making sure they have unrestricted access to safe, reliable, quality options. Drivers who partner with Uber do so to take advantage of the flexibility and earning potential our lead generation technology allows. Uber ensures that all rides are covered by insurance and that drivers on the platform undergo an extensive background check. We stand by our driver partners 100%. This is what differentiates them between Airbnb, I think, Mm -hmm. uh, and welcome the opportunity to work closely with the authorities toward updated regulations that put the safety and interests of riders and drivers first. Now, I'm no fan of working with the city, but I understand why a major company would have to say things like that. I mean, obviously, the city is going to they're going to be the ones who get concessions from Uber. Right? right. It's not gonna it's not gonna be the other way around. The company has previously described Hong Kong as its regional headquarters, while the government welcomed Uber with open arms. Invest HK, an agency set up to attract foreign investment, presented the company as a successful story on its website. However, that page was removed yesterday, and Invest HK posted a statement saying, quote, There are legal ways in Hong Kong for companies to offer car rental services via mobile applications, but not all mobile car booking applications can meet the legal requirements in Hong Kong, as Uber is now being investigated for allegedly operating outside of the legal ambit as a standard procedure. Invest HK has removed the case study from its website, reportedly valued over $50 billion after its most recent funding Round Uber's international expansion plans have come with a series of headaches as it runs into legal issues and opposition by traditional taxi operators in new markets. And this can happen to you too. Not not if you just get involved in uh, you know the taxi business or moving the moving people business or the house sharing business, but anything that you get into that threatens the status quo. 
you will become the enemy. And people, yes. you know, they come after us in the liberty movement, some of us in Keen, because we do activism that sort of stirs the pot. Yes. And it garners press attention and it creates controversy. And they'll critique us for saying that, well, we should have just been more easygoing. We should have, uh, you know, gone through the proper channels or whatever. The thing is, as soon as you stir the pot in any way, shape, or form, people are going to hate you and attack you. Hour three's coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Geico applauds your inner road name. A slow clap goes out to your biker alter ego. You might be mild-mannered Michael in the office, the guy known for raising his hand in meetings, but out on the open road, it's Motor Mike. Geico supports you and your bike, Motor Mike, because beyond cars, Geico insures motorcycles, those glorious vroom vroom machines. With 24-7 customer service and great rates, the only thing you'll be raising from now on is a heck of a good time. So head out on the highway and make that road yours, Mike. Make it yours. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 14th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.50 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,119 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $266. And how War.com reports, when it was announced that the U.S. and Turkey were going to unite against the Islamic State, there was an immediate announcement of talks underway to establish a safe zone in northern Syria along the Turkish border. It would be 60 miles long. That was all that was known. Weeks later, that's still all that is known, with Syrians unclear if they'll be part of the safe zone, who will be in charge of the region, how it will be safe, or indeed how the U.S. and Turkey even intend to make such a safe zone happen since both are ruling out any use of ground troops. While the timing initially fueled assumptions that the zone would include a lot of the Islamic State territory, more recent suggestions are that this is not actually what will happen and that the territory will be further west, carved more out of Kurdish territory than the Islamic State territory as Turkey shifts its war focus against the Kurds. Locals have heard all these plans to end the war before and the talk of an imminent safe zone is just the latest empty promise and the US and Turkey comments are just another PR front for an unworkable scheme that will eventually fall by the wayside in favor of more bombings. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy, and for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. 
UPI reports three years after lawmakers abolished the death penalty in Connecticut, the state Supreme Court ruled Thursday the execution of any inmate still on death row is unconstitutional. In April 2012, Connecticut Governor Daniel Malloy signed a bill making the death penalty illegal in the state for any crime committed after April 25, 2012. That left 11 convicts on death row still eligible for execution, though. The state Supreme Court said Thursday it would be cruel and unusual punishment to now execute those inmates mates, including Eduardo Santiago, who requested the court review the issue. Judge Richard Palmer in the majority decision wrote, Upon careful consideration of the defendant's claims in light of the governing constitutional principles and Connecticut's unique historical and legal landscape, we are persuaded that, following its prospective abolition, the state's death penalty no longer comports with contemporary standards of decency and no longer serves any legitimate penological purpose. Justice Chase Rogers dissented, writing the majority of opinion was fundamentally flawed and based on a house of cards. 19 states and the District of Columbia have abolished the death penalty, and Connecticut was the 16th state to do so in 2012. The 11 inmates spared the death penalty will instead receive life in prison without the possibility of parole. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a Kentucky County Clerk's Office on Thursday defied a federal judge's order by continuing to block marriage licenses for same-sex couples, saying the legal case was still pending. The Rowan County Clerk's Office turned away at least three same-sex couples who tried to get marriage licenses, according to local media and court documents. Kim Davis, the Rowan County Clerk, who stopped issuing all marriage licenses following the U.S. Supreme Court's June ruling that legalized same-sex marriage, is on vacation. Nathan Davis, a relative who also worked at the clerk's office told Reuters the office was not currently taking licenses because of active litigation. He declined further comment. In a court filing, plaintiff April Miller said she and Karen Roberts tried on Thursday to obtain a marriage license shortly before noon and were rebuffed. On Wednesday, U.S. District Court Judge David Bunning issued a preliminary injunction ordering Davis's office to process license applications for all couples, saying she had to live up to her responsibility as a county clerk. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. According to members of the 1998 University of Virginia graduating class, Governor Jim Gilmore's commencement speech to them continues to be a deep well of wisdom and guidance even 15 years after it was delivered. Classmates confirmed that while friends at other universities heard from such figures as Jimmy Carter, Kurt Vonnegut, and the Dalai Lama, the inspirational words of Virginia's 68th governor continues to profoundly inform their lives and actions. Whenever I face a dark moment in my life, I just think back to Governor Gilmore's speech and it almost instantly puts things back into perspective. Perspective. It's like he said, go forward and be successful and achieve your hopes and dreams and aspirations. All I can say is I hope I've lived up to that incredible lesson. And in local news, a five-year-old figures he has about a year left of peeing at urinals with his pants all the way down. In other news, using the amount of toothpaste shown in commercials is a disgusting experience. A grizzled proofreader has seen it written both ways. And a cackling Warren Buffett burns his entire fortune in front of the nation. This is the Onion News Network. The show is Free Talk Live, meaning you can call and join us here to bring up whatever's on your mind. We've been talking about the uh, the crackdowns on the Ubers of the world and the Airbnbs, and you're cer certainly still welcome to comment on that. But there's also, speaking of bees, bees. Uh, bzz, bzz, bees! bees that, the bees that buzz, not the bee and bees, but the bees that buzz. Uh, Danica, apparently there have been stories we talked about in the past on Free Talk Live about bees are endangered, that they were depleting the population. Yeah, I think it's been no secret. Like, everyone has talked about the bee-pocalypse, so to speak. The, <laughs> I hadn't heard it called that. That's funny. Or bee-mageddon, 
And it's just, you know, a couple of terms people come mm-hmm. up with that it was, you know, a very serious thing because with bees just suddenly dying, it puts a lot of crops at risk. So all the media outlets were Right, because this. bees are really important to all kinds of products uh, due to and not just pollinating Yeah, not things. just like bumblebees, but honeybees specifically. Okay. Hold and- on. So I, I'm confused here because you're saying that all of the media outlets were talking about it based on my Facebook feed. No media outlet was talking about it because they were all scared. And that that's Wait, the who's thing. Who's scared of what? But I'm sure you've heard news, uh, all sorts of media outlets saying how it's terrible that bees are dying off and no one knows why. I actually don't watch. You had not heard those stories? You not heard anything, anything at all? Anything. I, I've seen where people have posted on Facebook Here's the story that nobody wants to tell you about. All the bees are dead. So it's people like claiming that nobody's talking about it, but you're saying that everybody was talking about well, it. Well, there's definitely been there's story, been a lot of coverage, yeah, a lot of coverage about it. You know, it, you know, off and on, but it's just, it's been a known fact that it's definitely a bee crisis. That these bees are dying off, and no one no one really knows what it's about. Um, but the story from the Washington Post says to go ahead and call it the bee apocalypse because. The honeybee colonies are at their highest at 20 years. So, I mean, could they really have bounced back that quickly? Maybe they weren't as as bad off as people were making it seem like. I mean, you'll probably tell us more here. Sure, absolutely. So the situation at one point had become so dire that the White House actually put together something called a national strategy to promote the health of honeybees and other pollinators. It's a 64-page policy framework for saving the nation's bees, butterflies, and other pollinating animals. Now, and I'm sure it's a uh, very uh, exuberating read. It's certainly a page turner. <laughs> it will get your blood flowing, and you cannot wait to see what happens. I mean, 64 pages. I mean, that's about what the a standard magazine, right? <laughs> I would say so. Yeah. The trouble began in 2006 or so when beekeepers first began noticing mysterious die-offs. It was soon christened Colony Collapse Disorder, or CCD, and had been responsible for the loss of 20 to 40 percent of managed honeybee colonies each winter over the past decade. Uh, The math says that if you lose 30 percent of your bee colonies every year for a few years, you rapidly end up with close to zero colonies left. But on the data that I showed you, uh, it shows that there are a number of active bee colonies in the U.S. since 1987. Now, in the period after 2006, when CCD was first documented and talked about, there is definitely a dip that went down uh, at 2006-2008, but then 2010, it's just been steadily rising. The now, number this, I can't imagine, has anything to do with the government uh, issuing paperwork. I mean, this seems to be, if I were going to, to blame this on anybody... Uh, this seems to be like the bee people have gotten their stuff together and they've, you know, d- done whatever it takes to create a, s- a circumstance in which the bees can flourish, right? I mean, they right. they saw that there was a problem and they investigated what that problem was all about. And even if the White House hadn't put out a 64-page paper, I imagine that the bee colony still would have turned around. How many people uh, in the bee business actually took the time to sit down and read about what a bunch of people who don't have any bees think about them? Right. So supposedly, if CCD is wiping out close to a third of all bee colonies a year, how in the world are their numbers rising? Beekeepers. So the 2014 numbers, which came out earlier this year, show the number of managed colonies, that is commercial honey-producing bee colonies managed owned by colonies. Human, owned, yeah. yes. Managed by human beekeepers is now the highest that it's been in. There is a 2012 working paper by Randall R. Tucker and Walter N. Thurman, who are a bunch of agricultural economists. They explain that the seasonal die-offs have always been a part of beekeeping. They report that before CCD, American beekeepers would typically lose 14% of their colonies a year on average. So beekeepers have devised two main ways to replenish their stock. The first method involves splitting one healthy colony into two separate colonies put half the bees into a new colony, and then order a new queen online, which usually runs about $25 or so, and voila, two healthy hives. So I I think I can summarize this uh, quite succinctly in like two words as far as why the bee population wound up coming back up. Private property. Yeah. When people have a financial incentive to have more bees, they're going to make sure they have more bees. 
Essentially, it's that's, one of yeah. the reasons that cows and chickens will never go extinct. Because Absolutely. People have a financial incentive to make sure that there are always cows and chickens for people to eat because cows and chickens are tasty, tasty creatures. Yeah, and that same idea can apply to even so called endangered animals. Right. This as is well. a perfect right. example of the free market working. The other method involves simply buying a bunch of bees to replace the ones you lost. You can buy three pounds of packaged bees plus a queen for about $100 or so. Not very much money. Beekeepers have been doing this sort of thing since the advent of commercial beekeeping. And when CCD came along, it roughly doubled the usual annual rate of bee die-offs. But this doesn't mean that the bees are going to extinct, just that beekeepers need to work a little bit hard to keep production production up. Sorry. Now, I, I will say there's one particular species of animal that private ownership has not seemed to be able to help thrive. What's that? Panda bears. Why? For some reason, panda bears do not want to reproduce. Interesting. Yeah, so they're so like, like asexual. Ev- every <laughs> zoo in the world is having trouble getting their pandas to huh. reproduce. What about cloning? Um, I don't know if they've tried that. <laughs> That's but an they can't get like they've tried giving pan- the male pandas Viagra, Viagra. <laughs> and showing them panda porn, and really? they can't get them in the mood to reproduce. That explains that why the zoos go all crazy when they, there's finally a baby panda born. Right. I didn't realize oh, it was that hard to get them to reproduce. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're only in heat. The female is only in heat for like one week. Out of the entire year. Okay. Wow. So there's like a very limited period of time when they can reproduce. And the male pandas. And the male's like, eh. I'll get to it. Eh. <laughs> Whenever. <laughs> like they, they don't want to have sex to save their species. It's interesting. Wow. Yes. I did not know that. Well, in that case, uh, you still, I think the market could if cloning was or better maybe, off. Or maybe it's just the pandas that are like, you know what? Rebellion. The pandas know that they're trying to be forced to reproduce it and could be. they're you know like more conscious than what we think pandas are and they're like all right rebellion. I think people underestimate animals. I really do. I think that their their level of consciousness is much higher than people would give them credit for in a lot yes. of cases just because they're not good necessarily at communicating with us uh what their intentions or their thoughts are. I think that they are a lot smarter than uh, than people really give them credit for, and so maybe that sure, could be true. Absolutely. What you're what you're saying there, Daryl, um, and if you know if if the natural drive of a panda is not enough to continue on its lifespan on the earth, then I think let there them are, die. Let you could let them die off, but obviously people are going to do everything they can. It's you know by showing them panda porn apparently and uh, giving them Viagra, yeah, to to try <laughs> to prevent that, and and good for them. They're probably doing a better job than the government would be doing sure, if, uh, if they were in charge of it. And maybe cloning can do something down the line. Maybe that would be a way to to sort of keep them alive. But would that then take away some of the mystique of panda bears? If you could just clone panda bears and then instead of like, oh, this zoo has two panda bears. Like, I've never seen panda bears. It's like every zoo now has a hundred panda bears. There's as many panda bears as there are squirrels. I hate these things. (laughs) Well, I guess if that were what was Wait, happening, does that make it's just me pandemonium. racist because pandas are black, white, and Asian. <laughs> it's just a bunch of pandemonium too, isn't it? I think that if uh, if they did that, Daryl, that would be a good thing, right? Because then the pandas would be so ubiquitous, they would have to release them into the wild, uh, and they'd probably go extinct again, right? Because they wouldn't yeah. necessarily be able to breed more sexuality into them. Right. Sure. So the real question is, can I at some point in my lifetime eat a panda burger? Ooh. I don't know if I could answer that one. I've had ostrich burger and buffalo burger. I've had alligator so. before. That was pretty tasty from what I remember. Really? Yeah, yeah none of those things are on the list of endangered species. All right. There's more uh, you can share with us. 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. Whether it's the birds or the bees, it's Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. 
You can buy them through ExpressCoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.LRN.FM or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.LRN.FM. That's apps.LRN.FM. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you're welcome to join us here. The toll-free number is 855 450 free Joining you in the studio, you've got Ian. Danica. And Daryl. We're talking about the bees. They are apparently coming back. According to the Washington Post story, Danica is sharing with us, the number of bee colonies in the U.S. is now at a 20-year high. And this is after uh, a lot of concern around the bee colonies in 2006, after this colony collapse disorder was first coined, the term, where uh, at the end of the year or whatever, the or season, the bees would die off by like 30% from each colony. Is that right, Danica? Yeah, and it's normal for every colony to lose a percentage of the bees. And it, I, you know, it sounds like that as though that a lot of the beekeepers just weren't replenishing the, the terminated bees. And so it seemed like that there was a loss, but then more beekeepers became more responsible about it and it started increasing higher. And you said one of the ways they would do that is to take a healthy colony, split it in two, and order another queen from Correct. the internet. You can just order a queen. You can order a queen, yeah. And the queen is, you know, if anyone knows anything about bees, is that the queen, as well as ants, 
uh, she is like the heart of the hive. Like mm-hmm. if you don't have a queen, the, the hive's gonna totally die off. So you can order a queen roughly for about twenty five dollars or so, or just get a whole brand new hive, uh, three pounds of packaged bees plus a queen for a hundred dollars. Right. So if you lose thirty percent due to this so called uh, colony collapse disorder, which they had said that normally it was like fifteen percent that you'd lose, so it was it did seem to be more of a loss. Be- for whatever reason than previously, if you lose 30%, then just double your next colony, and there you go, right? There so you go. my question here is, has the price of bees and queens gone up due to this decline or what at one point was the decline in the population of bees? Well, some of the extra work that they're going to has actually passed on to us. Uh, the average retailer price of honey has about doubled since 2006. Hmm. Uh, I've also noticed the, I mean, now there's more different kinds of honey that you can get. You can get raw honey or you can get you know, different kinds of honey. But I have noticed that honey has gone up because I used to buy a lot of honey. Um, and also pollination Literally, fees. Literally, it's doubled? I would, pro- I, yeah, I would I would agree that it's doubled. No, I mean, that may or may not have to do with the uh, the circumstances around the supply of the bees. I mean, it certainly could be a factor, but it could also be that food costs in general in a lot of ways have certainly. gone up over I, yeah, time, I'm, right? I'm certainly not ruling that out. Yeah, um, the price of gas goes up. That means right. the price sure. of uh, you know the price of bread is probably a lot higher now than it was ten years ago. Sure, too. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's something to bread used to be like ninety eight cents a loaf, and now it's like two or three dollars. Yeah, yeah. And a researcher with the USDA points out that the pollination fees, which is the amount that beekeepers charge to cart their bees around to farms and pollinate fruit and nut trees has also hmm. approximately doubled over the same period. So wow. some of it is passing on to us. That's for- interesting. I didn't even know about that. I mean, I knew that people. We're doing the bee thing, and I just thought that was like, oh, you keep those little white bee boxes out in the backyard, and you go out and you get honey. But I didn't realize that some beekeepers are actually transporting their colony to a place where people need their trees and stuff Sure, almonds, blueberries, all different kinds of crops need pollination. And And if there's no natural bees around in the area, you've got to call somebody in. Wow, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, so that's why some of the prices has gone up. But, I mean, I agree with you. I think it's not only just, you know— inflation and rising prices in general but just some of the work that's involved with bees but Hmm. from here it looks as though that the bees really are in no fear of going extinct so i would say that this is definitely a win for the free market and for people able to see a problem and really think of a way to come across it i mean well i don't know if it's truly a free market i mean i don't know what regulations there are on bees but there's a chance that there could be some in some places. Sure. I mean, we don't really have a truly free market, but it certainly is a uh, something you can chalk up to the market. You know, it wasn't the government that brought the bees back. It was the beekeepers, the people who care about bees, the people who are interested in proliferating bees. They're the ones who came up with the ideas to solve this problem. Right. And they're the ones who implemented uh, those ideas as well. Right. In conclusion, Tucker and Thurman, the economists, call this a victory for the free market by saying not only was there not a failure of bee-related markets, but they adapted quickly and effectively to the changes induced by the appearance of CCD. So you can join us here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I was actually on uh, Amazon. I wanted to see, because you can get a lot of stuff on Amazon. Apparently, you cannot actually get a queen bee from Amazon. So they don't have that. There's one of the few things that Amazon does not sell is a live queen bee. Yeah, I also could not find fresh produce. That's true. But they do have a lot of other food and a bunch of products. And if you've ever been on Amazon, you know they've got a huge selection. You can get pretty much everything you need unless it's a queen bee or fresh produce from, uh, from Amazon. And I don't think they sell guns either at Amazon, but there's pretty much, you know, pretty they much They sell plastic else. guns. They sell steak and lobster. It's amazing. Uh, it really is. And how about getting 20 to 25% off of Amazon purchases? You can do that now with Purse. Go to purse.freetalklive.com and you can use your Bitcoin to buy the things that you need in life on Amazon. So maybe you want to get a book about beekeeping. Amazon's the place to go and do that. You go to purse.freetalklive.com, get signed up for your Purse account, then what you'll do is you can add things to your Amazon wish list. You go back to Purse, you import your wish list into Purse, and then you select your discount. Maybe you'd like 20% off. No problem. That's the average discount in the United States for Purse users. Maybe you'd like 25% off. I've had no problem getting 25% off on anything that I list on Purse. Daryl, I believe you recently got 
30? 30% wow. saved almost $14 on a case of turkey jerky. How'd that turkey jerky turn out, by the way? Oh, it's good. I've had it before. I okay. bought it from a grocer and then... So you knew the product. And, I knew the product. Yeah. I knew it was good and I found it on Amazon and, and there it was broke a 12-pack. And you're know, breaking it down by 12 uh, with the discount, probably cheaper than anything you could get at, a, at the grocery store, right? Yeah, because it's generally like four fifty five dollars a pack. I got it uh, $38 for 12 so just over three bucks. How long did you have to wait before your 30% Two off days. order was fulfilled? Okay, so that was a little little bit of a wait, but unless you're in a super hurry to get, you know, beef jerky delivered to you, why not wait a couple days to get the discount? If I was in a hurry, I wouldn't have put 30%. Exactly. You right, get to exactly. choose your discount. The only trick is you got to pay with Bitcoin. So get started at purse.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Joe. He's in Alabama. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Danica and Daryl. Hey, I was just calling about the bees. Uh, yes, sure. Go ahead. Here in Alabama, they've got a lot of co-ops in which uh, people do the produce, and the beekeepers take the beehives to the produce farms, and then they sell the local honey. And they say, we have a lot of bad uh, uh, allergies. And if you eat the local honey, you won't get as many allergies, plus sure. you won't get as sick. That's and true. And I'm not sure what causes that, but it really works around here. I think it's because there's little bits of the pollen that's uh, in the the honey, right? Yeah, so, so it's sort yes. of like a vaccine yeah. sort of effect because you're getting part of whatever it is that your body needs to fight. You and can so create then, an immunity for it. Right, you're, you're creating immunity, basically. Joe? Yes. Now, well, I didn't know if you have already talked about that or not, so I just want to throw No, that thanks out. for bringing it up. I appreciate hearing from you, and thanks for the call tonight. Now, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, so, in other news, Daryl banning books is coming no, back Darryl's into fashion. No, Daryl's not banning books. No, no, no. Not you. You're an editor. You would never ban a book. You might ban a uh, book if he didn't like it, like Fifty Shades of Grey. But, I mean, we should all probably ban that from our libraries. I've never read it. <laughs> Have you? No. <laughs> I don't I'd agree with banning books, and I don't imagine anybody in the studio does. But apparently it's coming back into fashion, at least in some places. Yeah, that's the claim here. We'll uh, talk about it. Reason.com has the article. You can join us on Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Are you excited about the World Wide Web? Do you want a place where you can share your ideas and express yourself? Well, dial up your modems and stream on down to the GCN Live Community Forum. Lots of radical features await you there. Wow, Internet guys, I am so glad I went to the GCN Live Community Forum. You too can discover why the World Wide Web is awesome. Just go to GCNlive.com slash forum. That's GCNlive.com slash forum. I'll see you in cyberspace. Space. Friend at GCN Live on Diaspora and Cross.tv. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. 
the Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We're here at Free Talk Live, and you can join us at toll-free number 855 855- 450 free. That's 855-450-3733. And uh, Pro XPN, that is a way to protect yourself online. There are a number of ways you can protect yourself, and Pro XPN is a good one to stop your internet service provider from snooping on you, knowing where you're going and what you're doing online, probably logging that information for, in some cases, several years. Uh, you can stop that from happening right now by going and downloading Pro XPN software. It's available for Linux, as well as Android, Mac, Windows, iOS, pretty much whatever device you're using, whether it is your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop, your desktop computer, you can get ProXPN. So get started at ProXPN.com slash FTL. That's ProXPN.com slash FTL. And you can use promo code FTL50. You'll then save 50% off the regular monthly price for the lifetime of your account when you buy the annual account with code FTL50. Brings the price down to around $5 per month, and you get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access and private torrenting ability. Plus, you can get past regionally blocked websites. Those are all features with their premium account, and you get that all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Don't forget to use promo code FTL50, and you'll get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. So, uh, let's see here. We were going to discuss the book book bannings, which apparently have not really gone completely out of style. Some people are calling for them again. Uh, Daryl W. Perry, where is this happening, and what's the source on the story? It is happening all over the country, and the story here comes from Reason.com. They cite a Harris Poll survey that says American support for banning books jumped by more than 50% between 2011 and 2015. Uh-oh. Conducted last March, some 28% of the 2,244 U.S. adults surveyed answered yes to the following question. 28%. Do you think that there are any books which should be banned completely? That is Ugh. up from 18% in 2011. While it's still a minority perception, I felt that from 18 to 28 percent in just four years was a rather surprising growth, said Harris Poll Research Manager Larry Shannon Mizell. To be fair, the wording is somewhat confusing. 
writes, Reason, jumping from talking about the content of school libraries to books more generally in a way that may have influenced some of the responses. Oh, oh, so the questions prior to the question about banning books were about controversial books in school libraries? Uh, that's what it seems like, yes. Okay. On then- the school library front, a full 71% expect librarians to keep age-inappropriate books out of the hands of students. So in the, in the case, of, I see what Reason's saying there, and that is that if you preface this question about, well, should books be banned, uh, with other questions about how there's naughty books in school libraries, right. then people might conflate the two questions together and presume that the question isn't about a wholesale book banning on the national level or the state level, but about banning them from school libraries. Right. So it would be akin to if I asked you a series of questions, and I know that you had pizza just before we I went did, on yeah. the show, but if I said... <laughs> Ian, are you hungry? And you say, no. And then I say, do you like tacos? You might respond, I just told you I'm not hungry. (laughs) But those are not necessarily the same same question. It's not I'm asking you, would you like a taco right (laughs) Right. now? He's asking if you like tacos. I'm just asking. But the previous question. Oh, taco sounds good. Yeah, I'm down. But but the previous question. The previous question influences the way yes. you are going to answer. Yeah, and that's what they're getting at. Uh, they now say, in addition, that's in addition to the 71% that expect librarians to keep age-inappropriate books out of the hands of students, 60% think that books containing explicit language should be kept from school bookshelves entirely. Oh, that's ridiculous. That would ban, what, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry yes. Finn, all kinds of classics. Right. Yes. And I, you know, on that point, Daryl, I had something that actually came up at work the other day. I have a coworker who has a nine year old daughter, and her teacher was so upset and talked to my coworker and said, Did you realize that your daughter is reading The Hunger Games? Which, if anyone knows anything about The Hunger Games, it does have. How, you know, teenagers and violence. There's violence, yeah. and she and the teacher's like, "How could you?" And my coworker was just like, "Okay, whatever. She's reading a book and she enjoys it. The At least teacher she's reading." Is mad? Wait, wait, wait. The, the teacher this is, is a teacher who's upset that a child is reading. Right. Yes. And she's reading The Hunger Games, which is supposed to be for teenagers, and it's oh, a nine-year-old. Please. I I agree, and that's what I said, and that's what my coworker says. Like she's she's getting the teachers out of her mind. But I'm just thinking, teachers would be like, "You, we can't have The Hunger Games here because that has violence." It's just like, really, lady? Well. So, Speaking of the Hunger Games and violence, 48% of people surveyed said that books with violence should be kept completely from What about books that promote racism? You know, you know, like Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer, I'm sure it has some racist phrases in there. Well, I don't know if a book having racism within it is necessarily promoting racism. I mean, if, if a character in a book is racist and that character gets shot or something like that. Then they're going to justify it, be, sure. That may not be a racist book. Uh, but, uh, yeah, what was that stat one more time, Daryl? 48%. So let, let me go back. 71% said that librarians should keep age-inappropriate books out of the hands of students. Okay. Sixty percent said that books containing explicit language should be kept from school bookshelves entirely, yep. and forty-eight said the same. Forty-eight percent said the same about books with violence. So basically, scratch out uh, the classics, scratch right. out all the classics, Absolutely. and not to mention plenty of modern day books that have a curse word. In no, them nobody whatever. can read anything from Shakespeare because people died in all of oh those. Oh my God! Yeah, they're super violent. And uh, and then, you know, you get rid of the books that actually have any violence whatsoever. And then you're getting rid of pretty much every book ever written except for, you know, Clifford or Sesame Street or something the, like the that. The <laughs> Bernstein Bears. Yeah. I uh, mean, Mercer Mayer. The, you know, books and uh, stories, uh, these tales, fictional tales, they're they're built on conflict. I mean, that's yes. you, if you don't have conflict, you don't have a story. For the most part. Right. I mean, even in the Ber- Bernstein Bears, there's still some level of conflict between the, the family members arguing about something. Right. Or so whatever, you, right? you can't have the three little pigs because the three little pigs, there's violence there. There's That's houses true. being blown down. The wolf is by destroying a big, bad the wolf. houses. Exactly. I mean, this is insane. I don't know if people, they're obviously not thinking too hard about these questions. Hold right? on. But before you get too incensed, there's more. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Let's, uh, have, let's hear it. 
Those surveyed were also largely in favor of shielding students from books containing Sex. witchcraft or sorcery. Uh, 44% oh, more Harry Potter. Harry Potter. More people were upset about witchcraft and sorcery than they were about sexual activity. 43%. Well, if you can get if you can put a spell on someone, then they'll be your sex slave. So clearly we need to stop the kids from learning about witchcraft because then they won't have as much sex. Which is higher than the percentage of people that want books about drug or alcohol use removed from bookshelves. Thirty-seven <laughs> percent. So more people want no books about witchcraft. They want books about witchcraft. So removed. no more Lord of the Rings, which Almost every single fantasy genre is based off of. Mm. <laughs> and no more Twilight, uh, because 36% of those surveyed well, want can, books about vampires. We can deal with our Twilight. <laughs> That now, all seems pretty standard. This is all about right. school libraries, just to clarify. That's yes. all. Okay, all these are under that umbrella. Uh, <laughs> more unsettling, perhaps, is the fact that 33% of Americans don't think school libraries should stock a copy of the Koran while 29% oh, want to keep out the Torah or Talmud, and only 13% were willing to ban the Bible. Wow. About a quarter think students should be kept from any God. book that questions the, the existence ins- of a divine being, while 20% want to keep out books that discuss creationism. Let's keep the internet out, too, from these libraries, because, I mean, look, libraries are obviously this sort of decrepit old uh, idea that who even goes to a library anymore unless they're forced to at a school for some sort of report. And remove any sort of history books, too, because history is sure to have documents of any sort of racism, violence, There's a lot of or violence. anything like that. I mean, sure. history is essentially a history of violence in a lot of ways. Uh, we'll Absolutely. come back here. Daryl, more to share? Oh, definitely. 855, 450, free. Are you a book banner? Do you agree with some of these statistics? I mean, these are shocking numbers. Surely somebody out there listening agrees. 855, 450, free. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Serious investors and traders want to make an 81% return in 60 seconds. We can show you how using our free tool. Use the same secret algorithm professional hedge fund managers use to make billions of dollars in profits. Turn $250 into $4,903 in just seven clicks of a mouse. Our tool is so simple, my 82-year-old grandmother can use it to make insane stock market profits. Best part, it's 100% free. Go to richmoneyrich.com. Watch the free video before the hedge funds make us take it down. richmoneyrich.com. That's richmoneyrich.com. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 
101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and we'll take your calls about whatever you want to discuss. Book banning is on the table at the moment, specifically kind of under the umbrella of, well, a lot of these questions in this poll, at least, Daryl, that you're sharing, were under the umbrella of the government schools restricting what students can access. And those were the questions that began the survey, which may have wound up leading to some skewed results once they left the school walls. Right. You. Uh, some of the questions included uh, people voting overwhelmingly or in surprising numbers to ban things like books that have violence in them, books that have uh, witchcraft in them, books vampires, that alcohol vampires. or drug use. Uh, sexual activity. Wizardry. Some of them near 50% saying, and some, what What was over 50%? Wasn't there over, was over 50% were books containing explicit language. Uh, 60% of those surveyed said that they should be kept entirely out of the schools. 60%. Wow. 48% said the same about it, violent books. It didn't say elementary schools. It's just schools. Yes. Right? Okay. School bookshelves entirely. Yeah. Uh, taking things outside of the school walls is where the poll gets really icky. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. In addition oh, to the 28% who say, yes, books should sometimes be banned completely in America, another 24% said they were unsure about the answer to the question. And oh, my. 71% wow. support books being rated in the same vein as movies, with 35% strongly <laughs> oh, in favor of... Wow. More than 70% want a book rating <laughs> system? Is that what you just said? Yes. So Interestingly, w- there was less support for banning movies, television shows, or video games. Incredible. 16, 16, and 24% respectively. Deborah Caldwell Stone, Deputy Director of the American Library Association's Office of Intellectual Freedom, suggested that this speaks to the enduring power of books. But the writer of this article says, I can't help but think some comes from how much Americans think they would be personally affected by each ban. Ban the Koran? Yeah, sure. But Mm. you can have my Walking Dead and Skyrim when et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Peter Hart of the National Coalition Against Censorship said he would like to see the results to more nuanced questions about censorship. And they cite... Yeah, uh, something here from the Library Journal where Hart says, we thought it would be helpful to ask questions that would try to draw people out a little bit. For instance, you say that you're in favor of banning any kind of book. Well, what about The Great Gatsby? How do you feel about The Diary violence. of Anne Frank? Absolutely. Cursing. Or Beloved. Who knows what someone has in mind when they're answering that question? A terrorist mm. how-to guide? Or are they thinking actual literature? 
censorship and institutionalized ratings. It are, doesn't even matter, though. It doesn't matter what the content is. It should be legal to right. print and distribute anything you want. Well, even I, I, I agree, but where he's coming from is he's saying that you need to figure out what the people are thinking when they answer, yes, mm -hmm. sometimes books should be banned. Even in libraries, there's sections where it has a label on the book where it clearly says romance or teen or something. So these books are already being labeled as though they're for a different audience. But who's to say that a 10-year-old can't go and grab a teen book and just start reading it? You know, well, that's what these people are concerned with, apparently. Well, yes. keep a better eye on your kids. It's not the library's fault. It's right. Yeah, if, you don't want, if you don't want your uh, children to have access to books with profanity... And violence, which pretty much is every fictional book ever written, if you don't want to have them having access to that, just go ahead and keep them out of the government schools and keep them locked up in their house and uh, prevent them from accessing any kind of internet whatsoever. Or accompany and, them to library and look and see what they're checking out. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that would be a way to I do mean, it right. I mean, if you, if you really want to be that... helicopter parent. Right, I yes. agree. That's not necessarily the best way to go about it. But if you really want to ensure yeah. that, that's one of the only ways to go about it. Caldwell, jo or Caldwell Stone said, censorship and institutionalized ratings are easy answers to difficult questions. I think it circles back to the fact that we don't talk about these issues from a civic standpoint. We don't talk about the Bill of Rights anymore, and our commitment to educating students about civics has really declined in the last few decades. However, she noted, there's always that other old adage that there should sometimes... or." There should something in every library to offend someone. There should be something in every library to offend right. someone. Right. This is missing a word yeah. in here. There should so. be something. Meaning that uh, your library is incomplete unless there's some book that would be considered offensive because right. then you know, you're not the best library in the world. I get that. That makes sense. Library Journal editor Lisa Peet notes that the survey's results would seem to show a rise in conservative attitudes towards censorship, especially in the context of school libraries. The author of the article at Reason says, True, but I wonder how much of the rise in conservative censorship views can be attributed to millennials of the left. Alas, Harris offers no general or generational is suggestion, breakdown. Hold on. Is the suggestion of that statement that the conservative views are held by left-leaning millennials? Possibly, yes. Okay. Uh, huh. Harris, which it. is the polling company, offered no generational breakdown for most of the book banning survey questions. Would have been interesting. I'm surprised. Right. So that that does not allow yeah. them to know whether these are you know like Old all people. sixty somethings that are answering these questions. Yeah. If it's a good mix of people, right? If there's young people that they're thinking, oh, Vampire Twilight was horrible. Yeah, ban that. Mm. You know, you you don't know what people are thinking here. Uh, millennials. They're apparently not thinking too hard. Right. Millennials, he writes, were, however, slightly more likely than Gen Xers to support a book rating system and only slightly less supportive than boomers or senior or their senior counterparts to support a rating system. Republicans, meanwhile, were still almost twice as likely as others to believe that some books should be banned completely with 42% support compared to 23% for those who self-identified as Democrats and 22% who self-identified as political independents in the survey. I don't think we're going to see a book rating system anytime soon. That just doesn't seem likely. There are so many different publishers, so many different ways to you can self-publish now, right. yep. ever, you know, easier than ever before. And the video game rating system, for those who don't recall, back in the 1990s, there was a push to have video game ratings. And what happened was it was one of those things. It was actually Joe Biden. Yeah, it was, was Joe leading, Biden that, leading that was push. behind that. Yep. Uh, he, uh, he was basically saying, look, you guys either do this or we're going to do it for you. And so the video game industry came up with the ESRB, which is a voluntary, I'm putting quotes <laughs> around that, uh, voluntary Ratings Association, but they only did it because they were under the threat of the government coming up with one and, and forcing it upon them. Uh, for the book industry to do the same thing would, would be a lot harder. There just are far more publishers, I think, than there are of books than there are of video games, for instance. And, Daryl, you are a book publisher. Yes. If uh, the book industry decided to, whoever the, they are, whatever book industry associations there are, 
if they decided to adopt some sort of book rating system, some sort of voluntary book rating system, would you uh, apply those ratings to the books you publish at fpp.cc, your website? I, I would not apply whatever they wind up coming up with. Mm -hmm. There was one book that I did publish where the author wanted a sort of parody warning label on there that says may cause excessive thinking and a couple other things. <laughs> Great. I might just start putting that on every book. Oh, that's cool. Or I would not put anything on at all. So you would do like civil disobedience for book publishing. Yes. Nice. Absolutely. Uh, the article here concludes college graduates were somewhat less likely than those with a high school education or less to support book bans. 24% versus 33%. That's sad. Those are some sad numbers. I mean, yes. uh, nobody nobody had any comments here on the on the radio. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-453 if you want to sneak a, a thought in. You can always call another night, too, on this, because I would love to hear from someone who is in the 28%. I, I would really love to hear the justification for why books should be banned across the board, not just within a government library, because I would still argue, or a school, a government school library, I'd still argue that those books should be allowed in the government school library in addition to everywhere else. And they, they don't specify here government school libraries when talking okay, about school point. library. It could be private school. Yeah. So I think that, uh, you know, the idea of freedom of speech is that you should be able to come across, that you can come across unfriendly and ugly speech, things that you don't necessarily like. And it's your responsibility to uh, to shield yourself from whatever it is you don't wish to receive. Sure. And with books, it's easy. You don't pick it up. No one. Right. No one's forcing you to read. Exactly. And, you know, you could argue if somebody walks down the street with a T-shirt that says F you on it that, you know, you're forced to read the T-shirt because you were walking down the street. But that's one of the problems with public property, and it's not necessarily a problem with freedom of expression. Right. Uh, so we're out of time for tonight. But you can join Daryl on his website and get lots of Daryl audio. He makes a newscast seven days a week over at FPPRadio.com, as well as uh, a few other shows. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Free if you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bothered to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Seditious Sirens is next after the news on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 14th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.50 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,119 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $266.
And how War.com reports when it was announced that the U.S. and Turkey were going to unite against the Islamic State, there was an immediate announcement of talks underway to establish a safe zone in northern Syria along the Turkish border. It would be 60 miles long. That was all that was known. Weeks later, that's still 